And good evening to the Kirkland Soccer Complex. Dan Hawk alongside class president, Jojo David. Yes, how you sir. doing, Jojo? I'm great today. How are you, Dan? Back in action with the two of us. Yes, it's been a while. We called a couple softball games earlier in the year. Now we're going to turn our attention to the pitch. Broken Arrow 2-0 versus Jinx 2-0. And the Tigers are second place in District 3 behind UConn. They hold a – who holds a 3-0 and record. Meanwhile, the Trojans are in a two-way tie with Bixby and Sand Springs atop the District 4 standings with a 3-2 and record. Obviously, with Jinx coming into town, the rivalry will renew this evening here at Kirkland. And uh, as you can see, we have a pretty good, pretty good fan base for both teams out on the pitch tonight. Yeah, pretty good even amount of fans right here. We got the Jinx side and the BA side. You know, we have our two captains out there, Brooke Dodd and Jalen Hammond out there. And this is going to be a big game for the Tigers. Um, believe it or not, Jinx is two-time state champs, their girls team. Um, they're very well coached, very good team, very sound. And a lot of the girls from their last year team that won, a lot of them were sophomores and juniors, so they didn't really lose anybody. It's going to be a big, tough game for the Tigers today. And for the Broken Arrow Tigers, a lot of uh, connections going off to the next level as far as their seniors and juniors and so forth. Hannah Anderson committed to NSU. Bianca Lopez is committed to UCO. Haley Henf uh, Henfrey uh, committed to UCO. And our goalkeeper, Jalen Hammond, committed to Grambling State University as well. Yeah, our team is really young. A lot of a lot of these girls, juniors, and they're committed to these big D1, these big Division One or Division Two colleges going out there to play. Um, we're losing someone pretty big today. Cameron uh, Majika, one a good friend of mine, she is out with an ankle injury today, and that is a big piece, to, a big piece of this team on the striking force of this game. We'd like to thank our one club sponsors: First National Bank of Broken Arrow, Since and St. John, Tulsa Bone and Joint, TTCU Federal Credit Union, The Arrow Group, and Quick Trip. Also, want to give a shout out to Tiger Threads. They're located at 1901. East Albany, 61st Street. They're open from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Broken Arrow Public School staff members will remember you receive an additional discount in the store. Also, Tiger Threads is moving to the new event center. That will be coming up shortly. And there's going to be all kinds of sales, deals. They'll take care of you at Tiger Threads. Both teams midfield right now. As Jinx with the white top, maroon bottom. <coughs> Broken Arrow black tops black bottoms and thunderstorm warnings tornado watch warnings earlier in the day and now we've got pretty much blue clear skies over kirkland this evening so it should be a perfect night for some soccer Joe yeah Joe. this is what they call soccer weather um last game it was the worst weather i've ever seen we came back from the um, state semifinals for the boys basketball game we came back and a lot of us jungle squad guys were planning on going to this game only three of them showed up <laughs> because the weather was absolutely horrendous but you know we all showed we, uh, we at least they came here and supported the girls girls as they won against i believe it was Bishop Kelly that they played last week, and they got that 1-0 win. Yeah, and with two teams coming in tonight, perfect 2-0 mark. Should be another exciting match as well. We'll take a quick timeout, and we'll have soccer coming to Kirkland coming up next on AeroVision. Matthews Ford and Broken Arrow has been collaborating with Broken Arrow Public Schools since 2016. Through this partnership, Matthews Ford sponsors the Broken Arrow Teacher of the Year Award by providing a courtesy car for the winner to drive throughout the year. We'd like to recognize Matthews Ford for their efforts in supporting educators and being a valuable community partner with Broken Arrow Public Schools. This support sets a great example of how local businesses can work together with our school system to create a better future for all. At Ascension St. John, you'll find advanced heart care, brain and spine care, and personalized cancer care. And we excel just as much in the things that can't be measured. Listening more closely, caring more compassionately. Tulsa Bone and Joint, Northeast Oklahoma's sports medicine experts. We are pleased to help you and the athletes in your life with a number of surgical and non-surgical options. Tulsa Bone & Joint is proud to serve as team orthopedist for local high schools such as Broken Arrow, Owasso, Sepulpa, Kasha Hall, and Bishop Kelly. We're also proud to be team orthopedist for FC Tulsa. Tulsa Bone & Joint, moving life forward. <laughs> Racing towards the end of the month? Ask about our early pay options. 
TTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. If you and your family have been waiting for the perfect time to jump into your dream home, it's here. We make buying a new home as easy as it is exciting with quick credit approvals and great rates. First National Bank of Broken Arrow. First people put people first. <laughs> Life happens in a hurry. Our money experts will help you keep up. TTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. <laughs> Your side hustle keeps you moving. We'll help you get where you really want to go. <laughs> TTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. And the national anthem means that it's near start time here at Kirkland Soccer Com so excuse me Soccer Complex. The starting lineups will start it off with the Jinx Trojans, Annika Patton, a junior, number zero, Adeline Wright, a senior, number six, number eight, Trina Walls, a sophomore, Landry Ficker, a junior, number ten, Drew Legan, a junior, number eleven. Sophie Wilson, a junior, number 15. Ramsey Ficker, number 12, or excuse me, senior and number 18. Adeline Phillips, number 25, a junior. Sophia Gaskins, a junior, 27. Madeline Goss, number 32, a sophomore. And Kierce Wells, a freshman, 38. Now on to the Broken Arrow Varsity Girls starting lineup. We have a goalkeeper. Grade 11, number one, Jalen Hammond. Then at our forward position, we have number two, Addison Castleberry. We have Leah Condry, freshman, starting forward, number five. Evan Shaw playing defense, number seven, 11th grade. Bailey Barton playing the mid, number eight, 10th grade. And then we have Haley Humphrey playing on the, the center back position, grade 11, and then number 15. Hannah Anderson, number 16, playing defense, 12th grade. Tori Hansen, forward, number 17. Jillian Hawk, mid, number 18. Claire Finley playing that forward and mid, mid position, number 20. And then Bianca Lopez playing that defense, number 23. And the Lady Tigers are coached by Cassie Embry as well as both teams undefeated so far, 2-0. and And it's going to be a dogfight, I think, from when uh, we start this to the end of the final whistle. 
Yeah, this is a big win right here, Dan. You know, I mean, obviously it's not conference play yet, so nothing's going to affect playoffs. But a tie win like this on a team that's won two state champs in a row, it is a big win. And the Tigers have not won a state championship since 2018, so we're looking to get that victory hopefully today so we can carry that on for the rest of the season. Lady Tigers coming out onto the pitch. Jinx still in their huddle, but we'll probably get underway momentarily. Perfect night for some soccer. Boo Boo Zela, is that that what I heard over there by chance, Jojo? I don't know if that's what it's called, but I know it's some type of air horn. You hear it, you hear it at the World Cup a lot. It's very very common thing that most fans have at soccer games. So you know, obviously, you're gonna carry it over in little old Oklahoma. <laughs> Got to carry it on. So we're about ready to get underway here. Lee Condry at midfield. She is the sister of Lane Condry. If you did not know that, Lane Condry, he is going to play football at Norseman. Um, NEO. N yeah, NEO. I, I, I don't know why. Golden I called Norseman. Norseman. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought Norseman. I don't know why. But, yeah. In Miami, Oklahoma. So the Tigers will start off with the soccer ball. And we are underway. One thing you always got to start with in soccer games is obviously you got to kind of like set your offense up. And that sometimes it starts like going back with the ball, getting everything set, trying to get that, trying to find those open pieces immediately right off the bat. Yeah, and it's been a battle so far with Sophie Wilson and Addison Castleberry. Jinx finding a seam, but that is going to be gobbled up by Hammond. Easy swoop right there by Hammond. Good, good defensive play right there. I don't know what the what Jinx was thinking right there, taking that shot, but Bianca was there for the easy tap. Easy way to get it to Jalen, and we're off. So far, Tigers playing a lot of defense. And, you know, they say in soccer, defense does create offense. You know, little things like this, you're going to find those openings little by little. So you pass it off to Leah, and she's got to get pretty big opportunity right there. Trojans get it right back. It's Ficker. Back near midfield. And I know you're a big soccer fan from what I have learned with you. European style, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, sir. I was um, cursed with being a um, Chelsea fan as a young uh, kid as a young age, and I've just carried that on that ever since. You know, in the young days, it was actually great, but now it just kind of sucks, you know. <laughs> Most of you guys, if you're watching this right now, you know, if you're a Chelsea fan, you feel my pain. But I've always been a big soccer guy. And the World Cup is probably one of the best things to watch, honestly. Even if you're not a soccer fan, it's just always so entertaining. Good defense right there. Torrey Hess is going to try to take that ball, and they're going to call that on the Tigers. And it's going to go against Broken Arrow. Looks like a shoe was lost as well. I think she's okay. That was Anna Joseph, the junior. So the Trojans will take over here. It's always impressive seeing just the way that any soccer athlete can just boot the ball. Yeah, it's it takes a lot. You know, actually, um, most most people who do play soccer end up they some a lot of them go end up playing you know kicking in college. You know, Hunter Martin's. Uh, one of my buddies, he's going He's going to college to kick, and he played for a football team, but it all started from soccer. So a lot of people who end up kicking or punting are normally started from the sport of soccer. So it's kind of cool to see that technique carrying over to another sport. Was this a sport young JoJo played back in his day? Yeah. Before I, his presidential run? <laughs> yes, sir, it was. You know, I, my parents are African, you know, so I started off right. in the soccer realm in the very first place. That was a sport that I loved and I played until I played football, did track and field, and now you know, I'm a cheerleader. So, you know, I just – but soccer was my first love, and, and it's a sport I still enjoy to this day, not only just to play, but also to watch. And both your parents are doctors, correct? Your dad is a doctor. No, my dad's, yeah, my dad's okay. in the medical field, yes, sir. But Okay. So You know, he, he was a big soccer guy, too, as well. Corner kick for the Trojans. And that is Kierce Walls going in the middle. That one nearly... Great job right there by Bianca. Get, in, get that ball out of that area right there. You can't, you know, whenever everything's so clouded up in the box, you got to have that person out there who knows where the ball's going. Bianca did a great job. Great read right there. Get
getting that ball out. You know, obviously they have another corner kick, but just great awareness right there to make sure that nothing bad happens. Because off of those double bounces, you don't know where that ball goes. A lot can happen. So Sophie Wilson will kick it from the near side in the corner. Tigers trying to keep this one out of the back of the net. Ball is up. On She's the ground. There. But the Trojans, or excuse me, the Tigers able to keep it out of the box. That is Pitcher perfect defense right there by the Tigers. You know, Jalen Hammond, she did come out at the goal to get that ball out, but that goal was wide open. But all of our center backs kind of just covered up that goal, caught it up so Jenks cannot get an opportunity to score. Great job by the Tigers right there. That one bounces out of bounds again by That's going to be a throw in for Ramsey the Tigers. Ficker, so Tigers will get it right back, just moved it up the pitch just a little bit. Yeah, inch by inch, Tigers getting closer, you know. Little by little, we're getting all these toss -ins. We're going to have an opportunity to get this ball back in that net. Two teams that have been playing probably since their Pee Wee days, and they know each other quite well. That was a good move by defender Haley Henfrey just to get it out of bounds because the uh, Trojans were attacking. Yeah, just right there, Hannah Anderson, actually she, at her first instinct on that ball, she went towards it, went a little bit ahead of her, but she used her speed getting past over there, kicked it out, greater witness right there by her. The sophomore Goss going to throw this one back into play. That one is going to be a trip. They're going to call oh, that one of the Tigers. That's going to be a free kick opportunity. For you know, Walls, she was <laughs> tripped completely all along, JoJo. Yeah, it's going to be a free kick for Jinx. And once again, Tigers, we've been doing it well so far during the beginning of these first six minutes of this game, kind of just closing in that box, not giving Jinx's um, people on the offense again that opportunity for them to get a goal. So kind of just staying strong on that defensive side. If we can just make sure no goals happen, we'll be good. So for the free kick, it'll be Goss. A lot of defense away from the perimeter. Goss trying to get one on the ground. That one's going to go out of bounds, and it should go back to Broken Arrow. Nope, they say corner kick. Corner kick for the corner. Trojans. Yeah, as of right now, Jace is kind of showing how how their dominance has been reigning supreme these past two years. You know, just continuously coming on this offensive side, getting these shots on goal. Tigers have yet to have a shot on goal in these first seven minutes. So, But also Tigers showing their strength defensively, not allowing any of these balls to get in. Walls again on the corner for the freshman. Low liner, but Tigers gobble it up. Good read on that ball by Castleberry to get it out of there. She's using her speed once again. Although she does play that striker position, she's doing a great job defensively pushing that ball up, trying to get something going for the offense. That one's going to go out of bounds. And Haley Hanford, I think she just lost control of that ball or whatever it is that happened, but now giving another opportunity for Jinx to get another corner kick. We can't keep giving up these corner kick opportunities. Although, yes, you want to get the ball out of where it is defensively, you just don't want to give these opportunities for them. It's another corner kick for the Trojans. This time, Sophie Wilson. Another low liner, but that one's going to stay on the turf way in front of the net. Good read by Leah Condre. Now her and Castleberry going down there. Going to create some offense, get something going. You can see Tori Hansen streaking downfield down there to get something open. And now the Tigers are pushing. Good move right there by Condre. That one just off the mark for Broken Arrow. Yeah, Claire Finley right there kind of just took a, a crazy swing at it. Didn't really expect much out of it. She just kind of kicked it. She was like, you know what, I hope it goes in. It sadly did not, you know, but hopefully that's a good start for the Tigers. Right, That's our kind of our first, like, big stretch getting down there offensively, getting something going, so hopefully I can just carry on. Eight minutes have passed here in this first half of play. We're still scoreless. Nil-nil. Lopez looking for the open person. She's going to give that one to Bailey Martin. Bailey Martin looking for somebody, but Jinx gets it right back. Tigers racing forward in the corner. And Lopez is just going to smartly clear it out. You know, she had the opportunity to pass it back to her fellow defender on the other side, but she's like, you know what? I'll take the chance. It just kicks it out, gives him the throw in. And that's probably the right move there. 
But yeah. so far, Jinx hasn't really been able to capitalize on their corner or their throw in on the Tigers end. Yeah, soccer is a slow, is a slow yet such entertaining sport once you understand it, especially. You never, I mean, in, you know, in football, you see like, in college football, you could honestly say, you see like 63 to 40, mm -hmm. 42 type of scores. In soccer, you'll see a 0 0 game, but it'll be as entertaining as something like that. It's really just slow pace, more technique than anything. And the popularity of the sport has not only grown at the professional level, but at the prep level as well. It's going to go out of bounds. Might go into the, nope. I thought it had enough strength to go into the street. You know, I am shocked at this weather turnout, I will say. You know, if you guys were not aware of all that, you know, the talks of the I always the say thank your, thank your local weathermen. They do a lot for us. <laughs> I know you feel that one, Mr. News on 6. But, yeah, <laughs> you know, tornado and everything. I know I talked to some of the soccer guys. Um, and they were worried this game was going to be canceled. Um, but luckily it was not. So Trojans back on the attack. They kick it up to Adam Phipps. That one's going to go out of bounds. Nearly saved by Haley Renfrey. Yeah, good read by Hip, by Hip Phipps right there. She just saw that once Jinx got that ball, turning it over from the Tigers, she just saw the opportunity, ended up pushing forward, trying to get that goal. And she had a really good read right there, good opportunity to get a goal. But luckily, our Tigers were there. Ten minutes have passed. Here They're at Kirkland, it is still nil. Tigers were going to get a th or will get a throw in here. It's Condry. She's going to get another toss at it, and it's going to go to Henfrey now. Does that one bounce off the defender? Little cat and mouse game going over here, JoJo. Yes, sir. Good, good ball right there by Castleberry looking for an open teammate. And Condry's going to get it. She's going to get back to Claire Finley. Finley's looking at that corner. To Castleberry, and she's going to get a push, but that's going to keep going to the Tigers. I mean, kind of, kind of like flip terms what we're doing now. You know, we started started off first time we had um, we had Jinx, the Trojans coming out here doing their thing, pushing and attacking on us, and now kind of just like the roles are reversed in a sense. As the Tigers are another ones pushing forward, getting the offense going for them. Hopefully, we can get another shot on goal right here. And that was, you know, I thought it was going to be a throw in, but they called that a foul. On Jinx, I don't know who it was primarily, but we're gonna have an opportunity to free kick. And Bianca, she's got a booter, it's a leg. She could probably get this. We can get a good read right here. You have any classes with Bianca over at the high school? Um, no, no, I don't, I don't. But um, at the same time, I've known her for a while. We went to middle school together. That one saved by the Trojans as the Tigers were attacking on the inside. Good clear out by Hander Anderson right there. You know that could have been bad. Phipps was right there to get that ball, hopefully get something for the Trojans, but Henderson right there with that with that mindset to just get it out of there. And that's just like, you know, that's that's that, that co collegiate level type of defense right there from Hannah Anderson. And she's, she is going to NSU. Yeah, she's committed to NSU. We had the signing day special a while back, and I think we spoke to her on our signing day special show as well. Trojans getting it back in by Leggan. Twenty-seven minutes into this first half of play. Yeah, Madeline Goss kind of started it off right there, coming from a defensive spot, coming down to get that ball moving. They're going to call corner kick once again for the Trojans. And it seems the Tigers, we're holding strong defensively, doing our thing, but just too many corner kicks. One of these are bound to go in, and we just can't corner let that happen. Once again, just trying to crowd that box, make sure that nothing, there's no open spots within that goal. So Wilson will go for the corner kick. But Tigers with some solid defense, it'll go back to Broken Arrow. Yeah, we're going to end up getting this goal kick. Good Broken job right there. It seems like the Trojans, they kind of understand that their sauce is not kind of just kicking it in. They're trying to get that header because Hammond is a, is a pretty big goal. You know, almost six feet tall. She's, she's, she's high up there, so I think they're understanding you can't really get a – can't really get like a, a really high corner kick header in there, so they're just trying to get it outside of that box, trying to get them like to get a little kick over there. But once again, Tigers just just working defensively, trying to make sure nothing happens. Hammond will be eventually playing soccer for Gramlin State University. Bailey Martin go for that steal. She, great, great job right there. 
But Trojans stay on it. Now the Trojans are trying to get something going here. It's Ficker down to Walls. Then they boot it back, and the Tigers get great field position here, JoJo. Yeah, Conjure's got a good opportunity right here to either just slow it down or keep going, and they should call that. But I had I did not see a call, and that was that was a risky one. So like she she hit her ankle before she got that ball, and Jesus is just gonna try to boot it, kind of go for a hail mary type of thing, and they do get it. And Bianca Lopez was all over the Jinx Trojan there. That was Phipps. Very good crowd tonight, but not really surprised with Jinx coming into town. Yeah, this is this is a huge game right here. It looks like Cassie, Cassie on the side, I'm talking to Trinity Shanahan. Trinity Shanahan is somebody I'm, I'm, I'm really, not, not really good friends with her, and looks like she's going to be getting getting in soon. Hopefully, you know, got to get some fresh legs out there. And moments like those, you know, in soccer especially, getting fresh out there, that fresh legs out there is where you see like. A lot of times in those big clutch moments, you know, when they say about the big guys, and you see those those subs come in and they just do insane things for their offense because they're fresh out there, fresh legs. They end up getting like these game winning goals, and Hawks gonna clear that out to Martin. They're gonna get some offense going. The Tigers hopefully trying to look to get something going for this pitch. A lot of traffic there. That one's gonna go out of bounds. And it'll go to the Trojans. 24 minutes, 44 seconds here in the first. Yeah, another, another cool thing to point out about, obviously we have a lot of parents here on the Jinx side and, and the BA side, but we also have, you know, in our little, you know, quote-unquote student section area that we have, we have a lot of the Jinx so boys in their student section and the, and the Jinx and the BA boys in our student section. And, you know, we're going to give a shout-out to our one club sponsors, first announcement from Bank of Broken Arrow, Ascension St. John, Tulsa Bonajoy, TTCU Federal Credit Union, the Arrow Group, and Quick Trip. If you know any of those places, you know, if you shop or whatever it is you do over there, go check them out. Trojans working on the Tigers' end. They're trying to kick it inside, but the Tigers are some great defense. Yeah, Trojans were going for that cross right there, but Haley Hanford, good job sticking her left foot out there, making sure nothing happens. But once again, another another one of these uh, opportunities to get that corner kick in, but the Tigers have size on the defensive side. You know, you got, you got Bianca, you got Hannah, and you got Jalen Hammond out there. That's a lot of size that they can't really get much in there because a lot of times these corner kicks, you get high up, you can easily just head it in, but having those big bodies in there is helping, helping out the Tigers, not giving up any goals. So the Trojans... Again, for another corner kick, it's Walls. That one is picked up on a save. Yeah, great job by the Tigers right there. I mean, there was kind of a, a mishap or a miscue. I don't know what had happened, but Chloe Looney came up wide open, but Hammond was right there. Good read, made sure nothing got in that net. Yeah, kind of like a, I don't know what foul that is called specifically, but, you know, you can, in, the, in in basketball you call it like over the back kind of foul. She kind of just put her hands on her shoulders, try to, like, push herself forward, try to get that header. Clear foul, good call by the ref. Back to midfield, the walls. Trojans have a big opportunity right here if they can get something going. And she's going to go for a shot, but great defense right there, I believe, by Hannah Anderson. Putting her body on the line right there and make sure that ball doesn't go in. So 22 minutes left here in the first. I think Ty uh, Tigers just overshot some offense there. Yeah, mishap right there by Adeline oh, Rice. She was trying to just there. boot it out of there, but... You know, the ball, uh, it's, it's a round ball. It can go left, it can go right, it can go ba backward, forward. It can go wherever. You never know where it's going to go. Try to just kick it out of there, and then going backwards, benefiting the Tigers. As hopefully, with this opportunity right here, we can get something. We can, you know, we can cook up something right here, get that ball in the net. And as far as Tiger offense, this is the probably, I would say, the closest they've been in this contest. They've been playing a lot of catch-up on defense. A million percent. And a lot of times in soccer, you know, it's like I said, we said it earlier, it's a patient game, it's a slow game. Not all the time do you really want to start all the way in the front. Most likely the approach that she might take since everything's so crowded up here, she's probably going to just end up throwing it backwards so they can build something going in the front. And I say that she does not do that. But ask, you know, to go forward, you must go backward. The old saying. It's all this time. I think it is. I don't know. Castleberry, good, good, good attack right there trying to get that ball. Yeah, Castleberry has been... 
a four so far. <laughs> Coming up with it again, she was tripped right there. And I think Trojans got away with one. Very noticeable to see her with those um, orange cleats. You know, we had the, in volleyball, we had the Purple People Eaters, you know, with Lauren Harms. And right. now we might have to think of a new name for these orange cleats. As now, um, I, I, I don't have anything off the top of my head. Yeah, so I have head, to think about gonna, that one for a it's minute. It's going to have to build up, but you know, we'll be here most of the season, so <laughs> we'll see how that turns out. So another throw in for the Tigers. Good steal by Castleberry right there. She's going to cross that over, and I don't know why they did not call that one. That was a clear slide tackle hitting that ankle. And she is slow to get up. I think she might have just got the wind knocked out of her a little bit, but this might play in the Tigers' favor if they can keep it going because they can flip it down to her down by the net. But it would be offsides, obviously, if they did do that. But yeah. we could dream, you know. Yeah, you could. Yeah, the tables have turned now. It's now Jinx. Just like that, looks quick like opportunity, but looks Hannah like Anderson doing a great job taking that ball, clearing it, and now they're just back at midfield. So under 20 now here in the first. Yeah, Jinx is getting some subs in. And kind of going back to what you said, JoJo, minutes could play a factor in this one as the Tigers – Get some substitution out there as well. Alexis Morellis and Nicole Martin in there for Broken Arrow. Yeah, and Jinx just subbed out Ramsey, Ramsey Fickler, one of their team captains for Anna Joseph. And like I said, like you said earlier, how I said it, Dan, you know, having first six, I think that's a big opportunity. And one thing that's different um, from high school, high school um, soccer and like you know professional soccer. I mean, for one, they play 45 minutes per, so it's just five extra minutes, so not really too much of a difference. But in professional soccer, you can only sub three times, and once you sub that one person, they cannot come back in. So kind of like right. with that fresh leg aspect, most subs don't come in until like later on in the, in the second second half or the second pitch, whatever it is. Um, but in, in high school soccer, you can continuously sub in and out, so they have that opportunity to get those fresh legs over and over and over. And Tori Henson, great job right there, keeping control of that ball. And they're going to just keep letting them play. Two on one, and she's still keeping control of that. Hansen trying to put a body on a defender. Let the Trojans get it right back. It's Ficker. Not a Ligon. Ficker near the middle. She's going to cross that cross field off to Jinx, but Hanfrey's right there to read that easy takeaway. And now Tigers, you know, obviously – they, you know, off, there's offense and defense positions, but whenever you are on that offense position, you're still kind of pressuring like you are a defensive player in the sense, got to kind of pressure to make them to make them have a bad pass or give it to you, whatever it is, kind of just playing that defensive mindset offensively plays a huge part. You can get a steal. And that one went into the street, nearly went into back of a truck driving down the road. <laughs> it's probably going to get ran over. It could, could be somebody's neighborhood, too. You never know. Well, we got a new ball in play. Someone will go grab that soccer ball over there at some point. 17 minutes to go now. That's one going back no, to the Trojans. Yep, another throw in by Livy Jones. Check that. It's Goss who threw it in. Feel the way that this is going. Uh, the second half is going to be a very crucial second half. Yeah, good steal right there by the Tigers. I'm not sure who that is, but that right is Nicole, Nicole Martin. Martin. Yeah, great steal by her right there. But Trojans seem to get it right back, and Hannah Anderson just applying that pressure, or Haley Hamphrey, I should say, applying it and making sure they don't get a corner oh, kick. Great job right there, just turning her hips, getting that ball on that other side of the field, so they don't get a corner kick. Instead, that they get a throw in. I believe that's their 10th throw in. Yeah, it's been a lot of that. Henfrey was able to kick that one back out as the Trojans were attacking. That one's going to go out of bounds. Went off the foot of Henfrey. 
Trojans will have another throw in. 16 minutes and 13 seconds. Nothing about soccer. I mean, obviously it feels like it's slow pace and everything, but the time move does move by pretty fast. And Henry right there doing a great job. She seems to just be attacking that side defensively, corner doing kick. her job. But that's another corner kick opportunity for the Trojans. And it kind of shows how this, this game has kind of been on the, on the Trojans' side most of this game. The, a lot of the opportunities they've had has been on their side on the offensive attack. Getting all these corner kicks, getting these shots on goal. But the Tigers just show defensively how strong they are. Yeah, Goss is going to do the corner kick here. And nearly every single one of their corner kicks has not been close to the net. It's been away from the net. And oh, nice. Save right there by Jalen Hammond. Making sure nothing can happen. As I said earlier, I mean, Grambling State commit, almost six feet tall. She can get up there. Shouldn't be nothing to worry about with the Tigers when it comes to a corner kick. So the Tigers will take over. She boots that one to midfield. Just imagine when she gets a couple of years of college under her belt. I think it's going all the way to the other side of the net at that point. Good job getting her foot in there by Jillian Hawk, and that's going to give an opportunity for the Tigers. Is Tori Hansen looking for the open teammate? She's going to bring that up the field. Hansen left all alone. She's going to look to create something as Morales is going to get her body out there, try to get something. And Trojans get it right back. Trojans trying to stretch the field now. As Walls trying to race it down, but that one's going to go out of bounds. It'll go back to Broken Arrow, and Henfrey will give it to her teammate, Mahika. Mahika with some leg, but. The defense of the Trojans has been pretty tough so far. She's going to look for the shot, but Hammond right there, right for it, good and easy save by her. Yeah, that was Walls on that shot attempt, but Hammond has just been doing all the cleanup duty in the back of the net. Right there, right there by Morales to Tori. Tori Hans is going to look for something. Going back in that middle area, going to give it. Looks like she's trying to give it to Morales, but there was some miscommunication right there as Trojans get it right back once again. It seems to be like the story of the game. You know, whenever Tigers get something going offensively, Trojans take it back. But Hanford right there, great job. She tried to stretch the defender and get it to Martin, but a little too much leg. Thank you to Audi Tulsa for sponsoring Broken Arrow Soccer. Audi Tulsa wishes the Tiger Soccer team a successful 2024 soccer season. Under 13 minutes now until half. Trojans on a throw in. That one's gonna go out. And that'll be another one over the fence. I can only imagine. As, as a kid, I valued I valued my soccer ball so much. And it's just like little by little, they just keep getting these balls out on the roads and just getting ran over. <laughs> I think they're looking for a ball right now. And they've got one, Hammond. So there we kick go. one out. Still throwing for the Tigers since we've got less than 12, almost less than 12 minutes to go in this game. It's going to be on halftime soon. Hopefully the Tigers after this can go talk it out, see what they need to do offensively because more so I feel like defensively we've got to figure it out. We know what to do, but offensively seems to be the issue right now. That's, that's great defense right there for Bianca Lopez. She understood not to do too much, nothing too crazy. Just stood right in front of her, kicked that bunch to get it out of here. Simple as that. Yeah, like you said, uh, the defense has been playing pretty well throughout. Trojans haven't had much opportunity to get quality shots towards the net. Oh, 
Once again, Lopez just putting her body out there. She seems to be the star of the show defensively. And now Tigers, they got numbers down there. Going to play a patient cross, cross it over to Martin, but a little too much on that one. A little too much leg again. It goes out of bounds, and Trojans will take over near midfield. Hawks going to do a little give and go right there to Martin. Tigers going to make sure to close this gap right there. Don't let them do anything. And, and Lopez right there doing just what she said. And Shanahan's going to get an opportunity to get that ball back to Henson. Ligon. And that was a lot of oohs and ahs for absolutely nothing. Yeah. As the Tigers get it right back. Yeah, Ligon was trying to stretch the, the field to Wilson. but Great job right there by Martin, but she gives it up way too soon. Too much leg. And that could have been a big opportunity. Seems to be the story of the game. Too much leg. Tigers keep putting too much in, in, in things that shouldn't be as much as is needed. And that seems to be like what's killing us not getting these goals. Under 10 minutes to go till half. And at this point, JoJo... I'd say both teams got to be gassed a little bit. I mean, we the season just got underway, obviously. Yeah, but this is a, this is a big one. I mean, not even it doesn't it doesn't play a part into the conference or playoffs and everything. But just to say that you had that win over Jinx, I mean, obviously, if you beat a team once, you can beat them again, and we are going to be bound to see them come playoff time, come state time, whatever it is, we are bound to see them. So kind of having that win over them kind of gives you that confidence going into the season, not only to play Jinx again possibly, but to play other teams in the state of Oklahoma. Yeah, anytime you can play a Metro team, as in the Tulsa Metro, it'll show out and it's going to be a lot of fun. Not only that, it's, it's bragging rights in a sense too. I mean, most of these girls, they play, they play club together. A lot of them already know each other, familiar with each other, have played with each other most of these years since they were like kids. So, I mean, just, just in the sense of bragging rights, it's a huge game. Under nine minutes now. Still nil. Lopez is just going to kick that one back out to Hammond. Hammond's going to most likely either clear it out or look to that side where Shanahan is. As she does, Shanahan's going to bring it back in, look for a teammate, get it back out to Martin. Martin's going to get it to Torrey Henson, and now the Tigers are cooking up something. As Henson's going to lose control of it, but she's going to still fight back to try to get it. Great job applying pressure as Alexis... He's going to cross that across the field. Tigers still with possession. Try, Tigers trying to find something in the middle now. A they're going to gonna call that one on the Trojans. Good call right there by the ref. Noticing that she, she went straight for the legs on, our, on Evan Shaw. And that's going to give Tigers a pretty big opportunity right here to either take a shot on this free kick or cross it to get a header in there. But whatever it is, I think this is our best chance to get the ball in the net. Yeah, we said earlier from the corner it was the closest, but this is obviously the closest the Tigers have been. It's Henfrey. Yeah, I was going to say at first I was confused. The Trojans, I know there's a rule in soccer whenever it comes to, like, you know, having that wall of defense in a sense, how close they can be. And I saw that they were really close. I was like, hold on, ref. Go ahead and step in there and get it right, as he did. So now Bianca Lopez with that powerful leg is going to have a huge opportunity right here to either take that shot or look for that cross. Lopez's shot. Almost. But defense by the Trojans in yeah. the goalie spot. That was a good save right there by the Trojans. Lopez, you know, she didn't take the normal approach. Most people would go for that, that, that post corner, that left or that right. She just went straight down that left side looking for it, but goalie expected it. Great job right there by her. 6.30 to go now till half. I mean, now within the six minutes, you got to kind of play kind of a kind of conservative type of offense, defensive look right there. Kind of look for who you can get open as the Tigers are doing right now. 
just kind of playing around with the rock to you find somebody open. That one's going to go in out of bounds nearly. Yeah, good stands. Good challenge right there by Joseph to take that ball from Shanahan, but not much to do with it because it's kind of like Anderson kind of stu stu stepped right in whenever the ball got taken from Shanahan, just kicked it out, got it easy. So it'll be a throw in for the Trojans. Walls took a shot with the ball, but you know Walls, she came prepared. She's got the black, she's got the black, um, black face painter and everything. And uh oh, they might. Good defense right by the Tigers. That was a risky, risky place. And I thought they was gonna call, thought they were gonna call penalty right there, but it seems that they did not. Good job by the Tigers challenging that ball, making sure nothing goes in and. And the Trojans had a good opportunity right there to take that one on the net, but I don't know. I think she just missed it, just didn't get that opportunity and went out. Good luck. That was a lucky, lucky, lucky opportunity right there by the Tigers not getting that one on the yeah, net. Yeah, Audrey Wright was trying to get it in there, but Hammond. And we got an injury right timeout right now, so we'll take a quick timeout as well on Aerovision. And we'll have the remaining of the first half. It's scoreless, 0-0 zero, zero with 5.23 to go. Stay with us. Tulsa Bone & Joint, Northeast Oklahoma's sports medicine experts. We are pleased to help you and the athletes in your life with a number of surgical and non-surgical options. Tulsa Bone & Joint is proud to serve as team orthopedist for local high schools such as Broken Arrow, Owasso, Sepulpa, Casha Hall, and Bishop Kelly. We're also proud to be team orthopedist for FC Tulsa. Tulsa Bone & Joint, moving life forward. If you and your family have been waiting for the perfect time to jump into your dream home, it's here. We make buying a new home as easy as it is exciting with quick credit approvals and great rates. First National Bank of Broken Arrow. First people put people first. <laughs> Life happens in a hurry. Our money experts will help you keep up. TTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. Kirkland Soccer Complex, JoJo David, along my next to me this evening, Dan Hawk. It is 0-0 with Broken Arrow and Jinx as Isabella Smith taken off the field. She was slow to get up for the Trojans. And another corner kick will go to Jinx. And it will go to Goss. But great the Tigers with in the there defense, yes. Happens. Martin doing a great job right there, heading that one out of there. Trojans trying to work inside again. Good cross right there. You know, Legan, she had the opportunity, she had the header, but Hammond was just standing right there. Just like a great wall defense by her herself. You know, most of the time you think wall defense is most people, but she in herself is a wall, not letting any goals in right now. Under five crossing. minutes to go now. Good clear out by Anderson right there. This Tigers should get some subs in. They're subbing out, subbing in Addison Castleberry, Austin Brown, and Lily Frey. As they're coming into the game for Evan Shaw and Trinity Shanahan. And like I said, we said earlier, fresh legs can do a lot of things, so Tigers look to get something going with these fresh legs out there. Almost four minutes now. Risky cl potential clear out out there, but Tigers get out of there. And with these three minutes and 50 seconds to go, I mean, they keep staying on the side for us, so we got to just hope to just keep that ball out of there. Tigers pick one off. Austin Brown's gonna look for an open teammate, but quickly just gets caught caught up right there by Landry Ficker. As Trojan are gonna try to reset and get something going, but left all alone is right. 
And she flips it back to her goalkeeper. Tigers right here have numbers and have time to create something, get something going. And Morin's going to lose that one too quickly. But we're going to get it right back. Anderson right there staying there to make sure they get that ball back. Now Anderson with the ball. Trying to work something in the middle. And penalty's going to go against the Trojans. Yeah, they called that one straight on them. She just went straight for the ankle, not even the ball. So easy give give that one. Good, good, good call by the ref right there to give it to the Tigers. You try to force one all the way to the net, or do you pass it away, JoJo? I mean, with Lopez's leg, you can honestly either go for the cross or you can honestly take the shot. I've seen her at the business center, but she made a, a shot from all the way down there, so she can't potentially make it. But she's going to go for the cross, and no Tigers there. So Trojan's going to get it right back and just clear it out for the throw-in for the Tigers. Nearly one half of play in the books. Two minutes to go. That was uh, one of our many few chances the Tigers have gotten to get um, Jinx's goalie in action. Um, and that one was just not really going anywhere. Just easy little tap, and she easily got that one. But hopefully the Tigers' second half, I feel like one of the key points that's going to have to get done is just attack stronger. You know, I mean, we've had a lot of opportunities to go down there and get something going, but it feels like we just lose them off of easy turnovers, little things that happen. So kind of just playing like sound soccer, playing like, like conservative and simple, because defensively it's 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 insane right now for the Tigers. So if we can just carry over that defensive mindset offensively, it should be a blowout. And hopefully we can get that done right here by Martin looking out for an open teammate. She's gonna take that one herself. Give that one to Austin Brown, but she's gonna keep control of it. Great spin move right there, and she's gonna lose it. But this, but Charles are gonna clear it out. The Tigers get another opportunity for a throw in right here with almost less than a minute to go. Yeah, the effort has definitely picked up in the final three minutes or so for the Tigers. And that's a huge thing about those fresh legs out there. I mean, we just mentioned Austin Brown with that move. And having those legs out there, they can come out there and just after getting, like having your starters go out there, give crazy minutes, having putting them out there, and they can, they can shine too. Trojans clean it out, but it's going to be offsides. Yeah, they're calling that offsides right there. She got a little too, little too antsy right there, got ahead of the defender. You can't do that. Can't do that one right there. We need, we need the jungle. We need the jungle to start chanting, you can't do that. <laughs> I don't think you can do that and be a part of this broadcast at yeah, the same time, I can't JoJo. do two and one, sadly. A man can dream. One man can dream. 20 seconds to go until half. Think, think Tigers either just a t either. I mean, it's one or two options. You play yeah. e like slow and easy to like finish Eight, these seconds. Seven, Seems like they will. They're going to go for five, a crazy goal. And that will do the first half of play. It is... Zeros on the board. We'll have the second half. You're watching Lady Tiger Soccer on Aerovision. We'd like to thank our one club sponsors, First National Bank of Broken Arrow, Cincinnati St. John, Tulsa Bone and Joint, TTCU Federal Credit Union, the Aero Group, and Quick Trip. We'll have the second half coming up on the other side. In 1989, the First National Bank of Broken Arrow established the First Achievement Scholarship Award to help graduating seniors who they or their parents were bank customers to help with the cost of a college education. And since that time, we've paid out more than $300,000 in scholarships to 40 students. I am going to TCC for dental hygiene and in total TCC is quoting about $30,000 for that program so this scholarship will provide me with almost a third of my entire cost for school which is really really generous. It's relieving to know that I won't have to worry about such a huge portion of the education. A scholarship like this will absolutely change my life because being a hygienist you have the liberty of being very flexible with your schedule and so that gives me the opportunity to be a mom and all of that stuff but it also just gives me time to stay with, active within the community and maybe do stuff with First National Bank, um, volunteer with Broken Arrow Neighbors or volunteer with charities and stuff like that. It's just 
having that profession be available to me is just really exciting. The bank provides the scholarship in order to provide financial support to students who face rising costs of a college education. This is just one way that the bank chooses to give back to the community as well as customers and their children who are graduating seniors. Holden Lord kicks off his day at Vanguard Academy, gearing up for his final year of high school. Without skipping a beat, he jumps right into an after-school program at Timber Ridge Elementary, filled with snacks and engaging activities to stimulate young minds, with Holden taking a leading role in the program. We take care of them, we let them play around, we'll go outside for a couple hours. They could possibly get inspired to do become a teacher or become their and life goals. And it's not just fun and games. Holden's impact reaches beyond the playground, leaving a mark on the kids he interacts with. Like if you're swinging, he'll come over there and push you really high and he'll play tag every once in a while and he's quick to make sure all of us like stay safe. So if a kid gets hurt or if a kid gets mad, He'll make sure to like separate it. We're figuring it out. This is such a great opportunity for him to be able to really get that experience and make sure it's something he enjoys and get really good at it. For Holden, it's the memories he shares with students from after school activities and jumpstarting his career path that have him excited about his future of becoming a teacher himself. What are we playing? Yeah. It's kind of like soccer. It's important to me. It's important to see other people happy and successful. I want everybody in life to have an opportunity to become what they want to be. I love watching him work with little kids because I think he just has such a happy personality that it's really easy for him to inspire others. So I can't wait to see him be a teacher. I think he's going to be really great at it. Embracing education, lighting up young minds, and infusing a dash of fun in every day. With AeroVision, I'm Dan Hawk. kinds of fun activities here at the Sequoia Middle School Gymnasium from musical chairs to even a cheer competition. Check it out. Kind of describe to me what each kid is going to be involved in today. So we're going to have some relays, but every student is involved with a, a cheer for their grade. We're going to have a chant so that everyone gets that school spirit. Realizing that it's more than just education, we can have fun as well. I mean, I feel like when kids are filled with love and accepted and feel like a part of a community, they're so much more willing and likely to excel and to want to be a part of something bigger. And that just feeds into the community. So it starts at the school level and then it can bud out from there. I, it seems like Sequoia always puts on the best pep rallies, but yeah. this one, like none other. Tell me about why this is so much fun to be a part of this today. Because everybody else is having fun and you like the vibe and the teachers work so hard to get us where we're at right now. And we have people like Jasper and Waylon that just care so much for the school and really want to get everybody hyped up because you never know what other people are going through. And it can really just be like a good thing to put on. What, what's more fun, seeing these kids get involved or seeing us old teachers and myself get involved at these activities as well? It's a little bit of both. I mean, seeing the kids get involved and get together and work together is awesome, but also seeing the teachers go out and break some hips is pretty fun too. Well, that does it for us here at Sequoia Middle School. Be sure to check us all across the school district with AeroVision. Until next time, go Tigers. A career fair inside the Sequoia Middle School Gymnasium, a perfect opportunity for young minds to jumpstart their career path for later in life. It's cool, I, I like it a lot. You know, there's a lot of different things you can do, uh, a lot of places to check out. I'm very indecisive, so when I see it, like the things that we have here, 
I kind of like get an idea of what we're gonna get. For the future, I wanna be a doctor. I wanna be an anesthesiologist. So I'm really trying to see what career like here has that. Really, there is a lot of jobs here that is very inspiring. I really wanna play baseball, but if not, I wanna, I wanna be a businessman and own businesses. I wanna be like in, in the businesses with like houses and stuff like that. There's certain kids that don't just want to do one thing and there's multiple things that you can like choose from. I want to be an ultrasound tech. It's just something that I'm really passionate about just so I know when I am older what I would like be focused on. They make really good money too. There you go. This is an opportunity to see you get to pick what you learn about. You get, there's all these opportunities that you can have and pick from like AeroVision or like uh, the bank or the army or the police. There's just a bunch of things that kids can learn about so they know what they're doing going forward. I've always wanted to go to college and this has really given me like the experience. I can ask other people for advice, but this is a lot more efficient personally. So I think that this is really helpful towards people who are looking for future jobs and future careers. Without a doubt, the future looks bright for these eighth graders and the career fair at Sequoia Middle School is making it a reality. With AeroVision, I'm Dan Hawk. Tulsa Bone & Joint, Northeast Oklahoma's sports medicine experts. We are pleased to help you and the athletes in your life with a number of surgical and non-surgical options. Tulsa Bone & Joint is proud to serve as team orthopedist for local high schools such as Broken Arrow, Owasso, Sepulpa, Kasha Hall, and Bishop Kelly. We're also proud to be team orthopedist for FC Tulsa. Tulsa Bone & Joint, moving life forward. At Ascension St. John, you'll find advanced heart care, brain and spine care, and personalized cancer care. And we excel just as much in the things that can't be measured. Listening more closely, caring more compassionately. <laughs> Life happens in a hurry. Our money experts will help you keep up. TTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. If you and your family have been waiting for the perfect time to jump into your dream home, it's here. We make buying a new home as easy as it is exciting with quick credit approvals and great rates. First National Bank of Broken Arrow. First people put people first. And welcome back to the Kirkland Soccer Complex. Broken Arrow and Jinx scoreless after the first half of play. Some other scorey, scores around the area. I will let my color analyst slash play-by-play -play partner for this evening, Jojo David, senior class president, by the way. You know, we got Eisenhower and MacArthur, still 0-0. Zero -zero. They're just now starting. You know, Norman North at Norman. It is 4-1 Norman North. Got UConn and Piedmont, 0-0. Zero -zero. Bishop McGinnis at Eben North, 0-0. Zero -zero. Owasso Bartlesville, 0-0. Zero -zero. Jinx and BA, obviously, it's over here, 0-0. Zero -zero. Deer Creek, Eben North, 0-0. Zero -zero. And Noble at Sand Springs, 7-8. To eight. That's a lot of goals in that contest there. But as you can see, most of these scores 0-0. Zero, zero, so we have a lot of good games currently on the pitch. And hopefully we can see a goal out of this game. If not, we will be going to PKs. And that'll be that'll be an interesting turnout. So we're about ready to start the second half of play. Whistles blown. Referees are coming back out onto the field. That buzzing sound is not JoJo hammering at me. <laughs> it's from a PA system. Another another big point that I just just now realized. I don't know what we didn't talk about. Obviously, Jalen Ham is one of our captains, but mm -hmm. Brooke Dodd is another captain, and she is not playing today either. For I don't know why she. I, I didn't see that earlier, but um, she's out with a concussion, so I had no idea. So anyway, we'll have uh, the second half of play coming up in just a little bit. We'll take one final timeout. As both teams get their final adjustments with their head coaches, we got Lady Tiger soccer at Kirkland. Stay with us. If you and your family have been waiting for the perfect time to jump into your dream home, it's here. We make buying a new home as easy as it is exciting with quick credit approvals and great rates. First National Bank of Broken Arrow. First people put people first. 
life happens in a hurry. Our money experts will help you keep up. TTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. At Ascension St. John, you'll find advanced heart care, brain and spine care, and personalized cancer care. And we excel just as much in the things that can't be measured. Listening more closely, caring more compassionately. <laughs> Your side hustle keeps you moving. We'll help you get where you really want to go. <laughs> TTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. Remember, the boys' game will follow on Aerovision, but the Lady Tigers got to get a victory first over the Jinx Trojans. Remember, you can shop at Tiger Threads. They're located at 1901 East Albany, 61st Street. They're open from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Broken Arrow Public School staff members receive an additional discount. Also, Tiger Threads is moving to the new event center that is coming soon. They're going to have all kinds of sales and deals and New swag is going to be coming in the store as well, so definitely check them out in the new event center. But stop by right now at 1901 East Albany, 61st Street. New swag, you said. Swa swag. <laughs> I was curious. I was going to say, I haven't heard that one from Gen Z. <laughs> <laughs> so ball goes all the way to Hammond. Hopefully it was the luck of the field. You know, we're switching fields now, so maybe the luck of the field was always on that left side, left side of us at least, and hopefully Tigers can just get some of that magic onto us. Yeah, as the sun is starting to set. And so the field might cause some issues potentially. I doubt it, but for the Trojans on their end. Castleberry's back in there. She's kind of our little speedster out there getting our goals. Um, the last game I was at, it was, I forgot who we had played. It was Bortles, but who we had played. And like two minutes in, we're like, you know, jungle squad wise, we're getting our flags ready. Um, and they're going to call handball on Claire Finley. Just luckily, I mean, she just like, like yeah, bounced right, right up bounced into her up hands. Into her yeah. hand, Not much you can there. do there. Yeah. But um, last game, in two minutes into that game, she immediately had scored a goal. So she's the little speedster on the team. And she's a big part of, you know, on the attack for the Tigers. Only gonna throw it in. two games, like JoJo said, during our halftime. Correction, three games with some scoring. Bishop McGinnis and Edmund North there in the second half. Edmund North leading Good, it one right there by Austin Brown. She's going to have an attack right there. Potential goal shot right here. Got crowded up there. She had three Trojans right on top of her. Didn't get the opportunity to get that right there. But that's a great job by the Tigers coming out. I mean, Tori Hansen came from her area trying to get something happen, wreak some havoc um, for the Jinx Chargers defense. And, you know, she kind of panicked, made a bad pass. Austin Brown with a great attack got the ball. But Chargers defenders were just quick to get there. And it seems Tigers right now have just like changed momentum, it feels like. Yeah, and Sanford's going to go. She, they flipped the script so far in the second half. And a bad attempt at a clear right there by the Tigers. Castleberry's going to try to fight for that one. But no call on that one. Now kind of flips. Trojans have, a, have numbers, and they have a good opportunity to get something going right here. Livy Jones fires it up to Phipps, but Tigers take it away by Lopez. How about the effort out of Lopez? She's been doing it on both ends of the, the field this evening. Yeah, she's, she's definitely that, that, that gal on this team right here doing everything. Hanfrey right there is going to kick that one out. That one's going to stay in bounds. Anderson's probably going to just clear this out to Hammond or get it out completely. And she does. Hammond's going to do a little give and go, but kind of rush it a little bit and gives an opportunity for a really short fielded side for Charles to get this throw in. I think it was a little miscommunication there. So an inbounds from Goss. And I, I think on the throw, I don't know what happened, but it's going to go back to the Tigers anyway. I think she touched the ball there. Either that, yeah, it could have been that. Or I was thinking maybe like she like had like a mess up throwing. I mean, in throwing, you have to keep your feet planted, and the mm -hmm. ball is like happy throwing. She was moving way. a little bit. So, so I'm not sure what of, had one happened. Of the two. Whatever it was, it was a simple you can't do that. So yes. that's the best we know. Hawkeye right there is going to try to challenge the Trojan right there and not get this goal. But Lopez. Kicks that one out of bounds for the save. 
you know, the goal as a, you know, for defenders in soccer, they call them center backs, center backs, um, right back, left back, whatever it is. Their goal is to kind of just close in the defenders, close, close in as little space as possible. They're not getting many opportunities to do anything. And Lopez just did a perfect example of that. Hammond's going to bounce that one out. Great save right there by her. As Hammond he puts her paw up, throws it out of bounds, and it'll go back to the Trojans, but more importantly, no goal in the back of the net. Yeah, great job by her, just getting her fist up there, getting it out of there. And But once again, the Trojans have another opportunity with the corner kick to do something. I mean, last corner kick, they, did, they took a different approach. They passed it to the left side, try to get try to get a little cross from the other side, get going, but now they're going to stay down that original route. Hammond's on the ground. Hope he doesn't play any bad part, but Finley's going to try to clear it out. Henson clears it out. Great job by the Tigers not letting anything happen on that play. So Ligon will throw it in for the Trojans. So far, the Tigers have been the aggressor here in the second half with 35 minutes to go. Seems it contest. all flipped. They're, they're closing down the field little by little. Heffer's going to kick that one up, but it's going to go backwards. But defense, she does her job right there on Libby Jones and gets the ball back to the Tigers. And Tigers going to have some numbers down the field. Henson's pushing down, trying to find somebody. Stays on her feet. Keeps it ball in. She's going to go back with it, but she's going to get it taken. But the I Tigers just have been relentless so far in the second half, keeping it on the Trojans' end. Soccer such a back and forth thing. Now, Clefren is going to go back to Austin Brown. Austin's going to get back to Morales, who's going to fight to get it, but she's actually going to keep it. And that's going to be a corner kick for the Tigers. Huge opportunity here, as we have not had the amount of corner kicks that the the Trojans have had, so hopefully we can make something happen with a little amount of opportunities we get. So kicking that corner kick will be Henfrey. What do you want to see here, JoJo? I mean, with with Hawk being over there, you can probably pull her over there, get get across right there by her. But I mean, with I don't know who taking that corner kick. I believe it's Henfrey. Henfrey. I mean, she's got the leg for it. We could probably get a, a, a cool little header right here. She's going to go for that really good kick. It's going to go back out. But Hawks over there. She can cross it back or give it back to Henry. Henry's going to go look for the cross. This move, good, good steal right there by Livy Jones. Just straight fundamentals, getting right to that ball. Didn't hit ankle or anything. Just a clean, crispy steal right there. But Lopez being that main center of defense for us just takes it right back. Nice move from the Trojans. Yeah, that's Sophie Wilson. And Heffer's going to clear it out, get it to Castleberry. Castleberry getting her left foot on it. Comes right back to her. Now and the Tigers got, can stretch, JoJo. And she kind of just took a risk with that one, just kind of booted it. That was just a little too far out of the reach for Castleberry, or she could have had potentially a shot on goal. Could have been. It was. It, it, I mean, she had the – Morales had the right read giving her over there, and that's just a not a great um, – Kick punt right there by the by the keeper. It's gonna get Tigers get had it for a little bit, but then lose it. And Trojan is gonna play it safe and clear it out. That's a clearance right there by Adeline Wright. As Tigers are gonna keep shorting them that field, and they're gonna sub out. I believe they're subbing out Claire Finley to get in. Bailey Martin. And Sophie Wilson will throw this one in. Tigers with great field position here. Just trying to throw that, want that one into Martin, but that one that one should have been in, the Tigers. Yeah, I went out of bounds. Ref, I believe ref said it went out. Okay. So I got to give that one back to us. So Wilson, correction, Hemphrey throwing it in to Roberts. Good move right there. Roberts goes back to Hemphrey. Good challenge right there by Castleberry. 
And Castleberry gets it back. We've got an opening right there by Martin. Martin can look to her left. Gonna get to Morales. Chance for the Tigers here to put it on the board. Yeah, I said they're good clearance right there by the Trojans, but Tigers, it seems like it kind of just flipped and they got opportunities, but right, good, good challenge right there by Hannah Anderson. They're going to call that one on the Trojans as they should. Anderson did a great job fighting for that ball inch by inch, and she got it right back. Hopefully Tigers can use this to get something happen. Thirty minutes remaining here in the second. Lopez going to kick this one just ahead of midfield on the near side. Yeah, Lopez already said she has a powerful leg, so she can get that one over there for the cross. But she's going to go for the shot on goal. The Vuvuzelia trying to Awaken the crowd a little bit here. I'm curious, Dan. How do you know what that is? I'm old. <laughs> yeah, sometimes this is the answer that most people have. They're just, I guess, you're just old. <laughs> I'll be there soon. People actually already call me call me old, believe it or not. I'm an 18-year-old. And, you know, I mean, I don't know what's so – I mean, it's, I, I got a September birthday, and I'm a senior, so I guess it makes sense. But, you know, I'll, I'll hear the old jokes, the old head jokes every now and then. But, you know, that's going to be reality soon. 29.56 to go. Trojans trying to stretch it. They got a huge opportunity right here. She's going to go for shot on goal. And Jalen Hammond once again being that brick wall, not letting anything go past her. Great save right there. And that was a shot on goal. Good, she had just a good read on the eyes. They went for that bottom left that bottom left area by the goal. She just read it right there. Easy dive for it. Easy save. She's going to clear this out to Castleberry or Martin. She's got two upper teammates. Tiger's going to cook up something. Both teams undefeated, like we said, to begin this broadcast. 2-0 and apiece. Non-district game here. You, 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 you could say non-district, but I feel like most people on that on that field can say this feels like a district. Oh, game. yeah, Not, not even just district. You can say this is playoffs, anything. It just holds more weight than you think it does to them. And I, I heard from a lot of them, this is a big thing that they want to win. I mean, Jinx is one of those teams, like, you know, like with the Chiefs, like you love them, but you hate them. You love them because they're so good, but you hate them because they're so good, if that makes <laughs> sense. They always win, but you just don't want to always see them win. So, I mean, because I am I love Mahomes, but, you know, I just don't. I just hate seeing that Saints team win every single time. So you can kind of co correlate that to soccer right here. You know, Trojans, you love them. They're really good at what they do, but you also don't like them because you don't want to keep continuously seeing them winning. So. Kind of want to be the new team on the block. You know, new kid on the block, new team on the block. And they're going to sub in Leah Condra. I think she's coming in for I think Tori Henson. That's who it is. Tori's going to come out, and Leah Condra's going to come back in. Hope feeling a little bit better last time we saw her. Since she was kind of hurt. And at this point, with, you know, 12 minutes have passed here in the second, you want to see the this offense continue to work for it. But potentially get something to go to the back of the net. I mean, honestly, not e even if that isn't the case, you got to kind of after that you got to trust in your in you your soccer players. Because I mean, yeah, after this, if it stays um, nil nil or if it goes to one one, whatever it is, if it ends in a tie game, we will go to PKs. And at that point, it kind of relies on just like your, the performance of your like singular soccer players right. getting that ball in that net. So if it does come to that point, and that's going to be a good cross right there. But Hanford's going to do a good job, and she's going to cross that in. And that's going to be a goal for the Trojans. Sophia Wilson gets it to the back of the net. At 27 minutes, 31 seconds left. Jinx Trojans on the board. They finally break even and get their goal. Sophie Wilson is going to get that one, and I believe she's just tying her shoe. I thought she was either crying in excitement or crying in pain, but she just had a tire shoe. And now just from the get-go, um, Trojans stole that ball. They got it forward. Made something happen on that cross to her, and then she just had an open lane right there. Did some moves on Hamphrey, kicked it in there because Cam went out the goal, and that was just a great job right there. And they're going to sub in Evan Shaw. Evan Shaw for Austin Brown. As Tigers now, they're the player on the disadvantage as Trojans lead 1 0. 
But the Trojans, the Tigers can do exactly what the Trojans did. It's not like they can't. We've been doing it, so we just got to stay consistent with it. Tigers are in second place in District 3 behind UConn. They hold a 3-0 record. Trojans are in a two-way tie with Bixby and Sand Springs atop District 4. I mean, so speaking on that, I mean, you kind of want to hope, even if if worse comes worse and we do not get this win, you kind of want to hope UConn just takes that loss. Although it, they are district play-wise, you just kind of having that record on them just kind of just shows more dumbest than you think. And UConn is on the road at Piedmont. And they're at the half. It's still scoreless. Offside's going to go against the Trojans. Uh, I, don't, I, don't know if, I don't think it called offside. I think it just called a foul right there. It's Hannah Anderson seems to kind of shaking up our, on her leg right there. I don't know what they did, but Lopez is going to be the one to take the kick. One final in 6A, Sand Springs and Noble, 8-7. to seven. Sand Springs. Tiger's got a huge opportunity right here. It's Condry. She's going to try to take that ball. So that one's going out. She almost hit her own teammates. As Knight is setting in here at Kirkland. You know, sun's going down. It's like kind of like a little breezy. It's, it's just that, that wood that you love to see, especially in the springtime coming up. Spring break is here, you know. We didn't even get to talk about that, really. I mean, obviously, our days are good, but our days are going to be even better coming into the spring break. Do you got any plans? I'll be working. Uh, <laughs> getting that getting that paper. Can't, can't really hate in the grind, you know. What about you, JoJo? Any spring break plans? Um, Just, I mean, we're, uh, a lot of our – we're planning a road trip around the south right now, some of us. But, you know, our original big plan was to go to Miami. Um, so, me and some of, like, the guys. Um, you're familiar with most of them, you know, Donovan Hardaway, Cabri. A lot of them, like, those football guys, you know, like my good friends. But – you south, know, as, hitting up South Beach. Yeah, we were thinking, but you know, as most as most say, most plans don't make it out the group chat. This one did not make it out the group chat. We talked about money, and you know, once we talked about money, everybody just dipped out. They said, "Oh no," that, but you know, I think you know, I think it's best for the best. You know, you kind of want to just save your money. That president's salary not paying the bills these days, Joe. Uh, not always. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not always smart with my money, man. <laughs> that one off the mark. Good attempt by the Tigers. Man, the vibes in this room right now are immaculate, I might say. But we're going to go ahead and sub in Nicole Martin and Lily Frey for Trinity Shanahan as well as Leah Condry. Hopefully get some fresher legs out there to get something going for the Tigers. 24 minutes to go. Tigers going to have to get their offense going. I mean, it's really crunch time, too. I mean, not only do you hope for a 1-1 one -one score, you kind of hope for a 2-1 score in the sense because 1-1 one -one kind of just brings you back even to that nil-nil score. You kind of would just get that opportunity. It's ref. Ref is helping us out. I don't know what he was doing right there. If he had a parlay on us, I don't know what it was, but he kind of just helped us out with his sister with that ball. Did you just say parlay? Yeah. It's, <laughs> you, you, don't, you, don't, you guys don't ever see those jokes? <laughs> oh, Trojans on the attack. It's Chloe Looney left all alone. Hammond, though, picks it up and Great then save able right to there. save the second shot attempt from the Trojans. I mean, right there, Looney was pushing ourselves, and we kind of closed that gap at first, but she kind of went for the shot, and Hammond kind of hit it up, lost it. Trojans had an opportunity, but luckily they didn't get anything out of it. You know, JoJo, I know you want to go to sports broadcasting, but you might want to look into stand-up comedy. You might have a <laughs> chance at it. Uh, who knows? If, if, if all else fails... You never know. Or I'll just call you. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, hold on. I'm not going to skip past what I was saying earlier. Oh, gosh. Maybe I will. Flips it up to Jones. Jones just on the far side. side. And they're going to call offsides right there. That's a you can't do that moment right there. But uh, I'm not going to skip past what was said earlier. I mean, I feel like I'm not the only one. You know, you ever like hear whenever, like, ref, you know, like maybe in like Instagram comments, you'll see like the refs. Like whenever they have like a biased call or something, you'd be like, oh, they definitely have to parlay on that team. You know, I was just like using that terminology in this moment. Okay. You know, most of the studio, I believe they disagree by their, by their laughs, but maybe it's just a Gen Z thing. 22 minutes have passed here in the second half. That one's going to go out of bounds. It'll stay with Broken Arrow. 
Shanahan. Martin tried to keep that one up. But yeah, she did. Ended up losing, losing it and got a turnover for the Tigers. Goss will throw it in for Jinx. And the Jinx Trojans substitute half their roster on the pitch. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of, you know, we, all, we talked about it earlier about subs and professional soccer, and you're going to do three. What they do strategically to waste time is they just literally walk from one side of the field to the other side just to waste every single minute. I mean, obviously they do extra time and everything, but they just kind of kind of play like mind games in those moments. And, you know, as we look at the clock, time is starting to become a factor here as we're down to 21 minutes. Yeah, Tigers there. It's it's crunch time now. So just want to say that, that below that 20 minute mark. Tiger substitution number 17. Henson. And we're going to give a shout out to our one club sponsors, you know, First National Bank of Broken Arrow, Ascension St. John, Tulsa Bone and Joint, TTCU Federal Credit Union, the Arrow Group, and Quick Trip. Said it once, we'll say it again. Those places are great. Check them out. And yeah. Someone's going to stay with Broken Arrow. Line Judd says Trojans kicked it out. Martin's going to kick that one out, but kind of just a waste of a possession right there, just giving it right back to the Trojans. Near midfield now. Header goes into the to Hemphrey in the backfield. Hemphrey's doing great applying that pressure. Forces them into a bad shot. Really had nothing going over there for him, so Tigers, good job just closing, closing that game, making sure nothing bad can happen out of that. So Hammond just... Sends it up to Lopez. Tigers just got to be play smart with this. Don't get a turnover. Tigers finally clear it out. They've got something going for them right here. Okay. Got to keep that one in. And the Tigers do keep it in. Great cross right there to Henson. She's got good ball control right there. And they should call that one. I don't know where the where that is, but Trojans just smartly just clear it out. But, I mean, that one right there, I don't know if – if Hanson just like kind of just flopped on that one, whatever it was, that definitely should have been a call right there. As clearly the Trojans let in with their body, gotten that call. Should have been a call on us, but either way, Tigers keep the ball. Bottle don't lie, as some might say. No one's gonna go out, so it's gonna be corner kick corner for kick the Tigers. For Henson. Big opportunity right here. I don't think Hanson's gonna be the one to take it. It's gonna be Hannah Anderson's gonna be the one to take yep. it. I mean, we've got size on the attack side, so I think we could, we could get a header right here. I mean, the goalie, she is on jinx. They haven't had, she hasn't had too much action, so sometimes you can just catch them off guard with this cross right here. Could be a huge opportunity for the Tigers. Anderson on the corner, 19 minutes, 19 seconds left here in the second half. Tigers looking to punch one in. She's just going to give it right back to Anderson. She's going to look for another cross. Castleberry fighting for Good it. Good control at that to get it back to Henson. And Henson clears it out. I'm not sure if somebody, if a defender had touched that. I, I believe not. So I think she's just going for the shot right there. I don't know where it was going, but. Good header by Hawk right there to get it to Castleberry so she can do something. Good good dish out to Martin, but I think Jenks is just going to clear that one out smartly. Yeah, that was Sophia Gaskins clearing it out for the Trojans. Castleberry flipping it in. That's going to go off of Martin's body, I think, unintentionally as they get that ball. Got a sub. Yeah, Claire Finley's going to come in for Martin. Martin put in some solid minutes right there. Got some attack going, but can get some fresh legs out there with Claire Martin. Hope she can get something going. Just going to kick that out. Watch your head. Tigers really going to have to come up with something going because they're down to just over 17 minutes left in the contest. I mean, 17 minutes is a lot of time, but they do kind of get kind of got to get, get to. Hurrying up a little bit as they, they rushed. Castlebridge, she got that ball, immediately threw it in, but 
Ref had to stop it to make sure if that was the right call, if it was our ball or not, and it was. That one's going to stay inbound. A lot of contact. It's going to go back to Broken Arrow. Yeah, Trojan fans seem very upset off of that call. I mean, it did hit Finley's hand, but I believe before it hit her hand, there was a little bit of a push by, by the Trojans right there. So good call by the ref noticing that. So Hemphrey will take over on the near side near midfield. Might be taking a deep boot. Gonna have to save that. She does. She kept it in. Really good job right there. And I think That's that gonna go be to her ball. Yep. Yeah, that right off right off the bat. A thicker. A thicker. Like I said, Tigers are just like inching and inching little by little, closing down that field, hopefully gonna get an opportunity right here. Heffrey's gonna cross that over to Finley. Good pressure right there by Jones. Just to even just get it out of there. And as you see on the far right of our side, you see the, tr the boys getting ready to warm up as at 8 o'clock. It will be time, so do not leave us. We will be here for the boys' soccer game. Just about 16 minutes left. Tigers needing a goal to extend it. And uh, another thing I will say we haven't we haven't seen you know compared to the last last game I was at um, present wise like on the field watching it um, a lot of yellow cards and red cards were out there we have yet to see any any um dirty dirty um slide tackles anything crazy no crazy handballs so it's, it's been, a, been a very clean game for both teams this evening it's been a very respectful match so you like to, you like to see that at, at a good clean soccer not much flopping and everything you know soccer gets a bad rep because of flopping but it's gonna be a good attack by right there by the Trojans, but Tiger's going to stay there, and that should be a call as she went straight for that ankle. Tigers catch a break here as the Trojans were on the attack. Yeah, Jones and Anderson just going to laugh that one off. Actually, just talk with each other. Seems to be like all, all good feels currently out here. Nothing. Libby Jones didn't seem too happy that for the Trojans. Crossed by Hawk right there to get it to us. I think I'm going to say that one was out, and that's going to be Trojan ball. So the Trojans will throw this one in on the far side. I feel like with the momentum this game is going, if the Trojans were to get a goal, it, it might be game for them. So hopefully Tigers can just keep doing what they were doing defensively at the beginning of this first half to make sure nothing that happens. And Levy Jones is going to go for an attack. But great, great challenge by, by Hanfrey. And they're not going to call that one right there. It seems to be a little bit, a little rough ball right there. But Chippiness has definitely picked up here. And yeah, it's going to happen. You know, within less than 14 minutes to go, it's going to be that time where everybody's rushing. Good save right there by Hammond. We have yet to see a lot of action for us since that goal, so it's been pretty quiet offensively for the Trojans until then. So hopefully Ti Tigers can just keep on that momentum defensively and hopefully get some offensively. Yeah, Hammond gobbled that one up. Castleberry now. She seems to be everywhere, just Trying doing everything. Trying to get a corner, first. slips it up. Beautiful sunset, by the way. Yeah, it looks great. You know, everybody gets your cameras out. You know, people do that a lot. Personally, I don't. I need space on my phone, but it's always a beautiful thing. For all your pictures in Miami, right? <laughs> Y'all got some humor. <laughs> Castleberry with the ball on the near side. Trying to create space. She does. She can look for the cross right here. Oh. Jinx playing some tough D. It was Goss. And that one's going to go out of bounds. Yep. Corner be, kick corner. for Henfrey. Well. You 
know, Tigers right here. This is a opportunity to get one of those crosses. I mean, we got some size in that back over there. You got Claire Finley, uh, Martin, Tori. You got some. You got some tall bodies over there. They can get. They can get a header in there. So if we get a, a good cross by Humphrey, so that can happen. It's a good cross. She lost control of it. Good clearance by the Trojans, but Tigers have another opportunity. Hopefully, they can keep control of it. But Livy Jones, being smart, kicks it out. Under 12 now. Henfrey will throw this one in. Goes to Henson. Henson and they're with grabbing a lot of her hand for sure. Good call by the ref right there to reiterate the fact that that was. And I mean, with Henfrey's leg, you could just set up something and get a, get a free kick right here. Yeah, Henson was getting double teamed by the Trojans. Getting held by both, too. So good awareness by the ref to call that one. But I mean, with, with like I said earlier, with Henfrey's leg, you could get, you could get a, good, a good cross right here up there, get a good header, a little like, tap in. Anything can happen. Good boot by Henfrey. It's kind of kind of reset. Lopez is going to look for it. She's going to take a wild kick at it. That one's going to go out of bounds, though. Way more than that's going on the field. been a good game so far as we enter into almost less than 10 minutes to go. 0-1, Trojans lead. Hopefully the Tigers can get something going offensively. I mean, we've been doing great things defensively. Just kind of correlate that gameplay into the offense. Get a goal in there. Go confidently into PKs. I mean, momentum-wise, it's going to be great if we can get this goal because momentum will be shifted from their side to ours. Going into PKs, we'll have that confidence up. Tigers trying to play catch up. And Hawk right there kind of puts it in a, in a dangerous spot. Kicking it back and it's two on one action. Walls. Good save right there by Hammond. Doing her thing. Ref says play on as Trojans look back to make to try to get the peak, the penalty called. But Hammond does a good job, good awareness right there, knowing that ball was going and getting it. And we do have a score update. UConn at Piedmont. UConn is losing. 0-1, that's big on us. And Norman at Norm, Norman North at Norman, it is 5-1 Norman North. And it kind of goes to show that game was 0-0 at the half and it just kind of shifted. I mean, all these games started off 0-0, but it just kind of shows it. And that should be offsides for sure. And the flag went up. So that was going to go offsides. Wilson with a header to the back of the net, but it's not going to matter. Clear, clear offsides, like like a cherry picking basketball. There was nobody back there. She was just standing back there, clear. Lopez was clearly in front of her. Good call by the ref. And that's gonna kill some some momentum and excitement from the Trojans too as well. Under nine minutes to go now. Lopez is gonna get that ball. Hopefully, just keep control of it. Lopez up to Castleberry. And here's some oohs and awesome from the crowd. They're still engaged. Tori Hansen's going to look for Castleberry. She's going to get it to her. That's going to go out of bounds against the Trojans on Goss, so the Tigers will take over, but Goss is injured on the play. I don't know if it was the ball that I hit her ankle, but she did take a quite a shot. We'll take a quick timeout. 8.22 to go here in the second. Jinx lead the Tigers 1-0. Stay with us on Aerovision. <laughs> Racing towards the end of the month? Yeah, okay. Ask about our early pay options. <laughs> TTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. If you and your family have been waiting for the perfect time to jump into your dream home, it's here. We make buying a new home as easy as it is exciting with quick credit approvals and great rates. First National Bank of Broken Arrow. First people put people first. 
at Ascension St. John, you'll find advanced heart care, brain and spine care, and personalized cancer care. And we excel just as much in the things that can't be measured. Listening more closely, caring more compassionately. <laughs> Your side hustle keeps you moving. We'll help you get where you really want to go. <laughs> TTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. If you and your family have been waiting for the perfect time to jump into your dream home, it's here. We make buying a new home as easy as it is exciting with quick credit approvals and great rates. First National Bank of Broken Arrow. First people put people first. And welcome back to the Kirkland Soccer Complex. Jinx leading it 1-0 over Broken Arrow. Madeline Goss able to walk off the field on her own power. Tigers will take over on an inbound. JoJo David, my color analyst today. Dan Hawk along for the ride. 8.22 to go. Tigers going to need some momentum here. Danny, think we're ever going to see a Dan Does Stuff Soccer Edition? I don't know. Maybe. I would love to see that. But Tigers, kind of everything they had just gained, are going to lose. This is going right back. And Anderson's going to give that one to Jalen Hammond. Hammond's going to look, hopefully look for someone to clear that one out to. Lopez. She's going to give that one to Castleberry. Castleberry's going to give nice it back. Nice pass. Passing to one another. Now Hemphrey with the rock. Good ball movement. Hemphrey's looking for the, the big one, but she's not going to get it. But Hawk is going to go in there try to take that one. Thicker in the middle for the Trojans. Good spinner. I don't know if that's Sends an offside it up to Legan. Not, but Legan all alone, but her shot is off the mark. She had a good, clean look to the net. As Hammond was out of position, but doesn't matter. It goes out of bounds. Yeah, she was going for that bottom left post right there. Had a good look at it. I, mean, I thought they were going to call the offsides, but, I mean, Legan, she did a great job just, like, using her body, outstrengthening Hanfrey, taking that shot. But, I mean, that, I mean, will play a huge factor. I mean, Hammond, the job that she did to spread her body out to make sure that there was, like, not an opening for her to get that goal in there, great job by her. I mean, little things count. You know, although she didn't make any contact on the ball, just getting her body out there, spreading it out, got the job done. As Tigers luckily stay at one at um, nil one instead of down two, and we've got some subs in the game as Lala Mars is going to make an appearance. That one's staying in bounds. Yeah, it goes out of bounds. Down to 6.15 left to go. Took a little pause for some odd reason, but Mars is going to head that one. It's just going to go right back out of bounds. Trojans are just going to be playing quiet ball at this point. Another out of bounds, but their job is really at this point just kind of just take it easy. Don't let them get any, don't make any mistakes to give the Tigers an opportunity and just be smart with it. Leg in. Goes out of bounds, so Legan will work on the near side. They flip it over to Walls. So Walls with the throw in for the Trojans. Five minutes and 25 seconds. That one goes right in the face on Castleberry. She's tough. Seems Trojans, what they're doing is kind of just keeping everything on their side of the field, keeping it on this bottom, to our bottom right area. Just like it doesn't even matter to them, really. They don't, have, they don't really have to get much offense going. If they can just keep that ball in possession to them, they're fine. Legan trying to send it in, but that was corner deflected by Henfrey. Sliding tackle. Once again, Henfrey just doing her job defensively. Her and, her and Bianca Lopez on that defensive side are just 
something to be reckoned with. Keep doing their job, make sure nothing happens. And I think that was a strike of lightning. Yeah, lightning in the far distance. I don't think the referee saw it. Very slight, not really noticeable, but. That one's that on one. the net, but not on, on top of the net. But lightning is too far away from what I hear. It is getting extra windy now. And in a good way, though, I feel like getting a nice little cool off from that sun as Mars is going to challenge that ball. Hanford's going to keep control of this. casper has got it. Tiger's got an opportunity right here. That pass just a little off the mark. It's going to go out of bounds. Less than four minutes to go now. Isla Mars in there for B.A. Good job by the Tigers, just kind of like trying to figure out where they need to go with their offense right here. Just taking it easy def defensively. So that's a good steal right there by Isabella Smith taking it. And Bianca Lopez is going to take it right back from them. And that one was clearly at the ankle, but no call. Somehow she stayed on her feet as well. Yeah, great, at, just at, at being athletic right there in that moment. As Anderson's gonna go for a bicycle kick type of move right there. Under four to go. Throw wins the Tigers. Tigers will inbound it. It would be a huge momentum shift to get a goal right here. Man, they're going to have to find some answers very quickly as time is becoming a factor. Yeah, Dan, I've, I've seen last second goals happen and many goals, last second goals happen, last second runs happen, last second shots happen. A lot of things can happen in that crunch time moment. That's what champions are made of. That's what they always say. 220. Left in the contest, Jinx leading it, 1-0. We've got a good opportunity right here to get across. She's gonna keep that one inbounds. And that was all ball. Good good no call by the ref right there. I mean, Bianca Lopez did come with some type of aggression, but he kinda, kinda got to with his last few minutes and not having a lead. As the Trojans are gonna be smart Waste some time and get some subs out. Yeah, they're switching their team around to just kill some time. Under two minutes now. Remember, the boys' game will follow. That's going to be a great one, too. I mean, the, the boys also coming back. Um, that's going to be a state championship rematch, actually. Last year, um, the state championship, I was actually, I got an opportunity to be at that game. Really cool experience to see like the, the whole like soccer environment, like a full student section. It was really fun, but we lost in PKs, and that was a great game. Minute 10 to go. That one's gonna go way off the mark to Hammond. She wisely picks the ball up, the second ball up behind the net. And now it's just go time. You got it less, uh, basically less than a minute to go. You gotta get something going. Castleberry being fast right there, keeping it in. Good effort, but and that wind is blowing. Castleberry stays on her feet, 40 seconds now. And they're gonna say that, th that she hit her. I didn't see that happen, but. And injured on the play is Chloe Looney. She gets back up quickly though. 25 seconds to go. Leggin will kick this one. 10 seconds. Shot is off the mark. Nine seconds. Castleberry nearly picked it off. Leggin somehow comes back up with it. And that is gonna do it. The Trojans stay undefeated. They move to 3-0. The Lady Tigers fall to 2-1 on the year. 
as the final is 1-0 here at Kirkland. I want to thank JoJo David for being my color analyst. I'd like to thank the students as well. We'll have the boys game coming up in just a little bit on Aerovision. The final once again, 1-0 Trojans over the Tigers. Stay with us on Aerovision.
welcome back to the Kirkland Soccer Complex. Dan Hawk alongside Jojo David as we now have the boys match between the Jinx Trojans and the Broken Arrow Tigers. Broken Arrow is atop District 3 standings while Jinx is in fifth place in District 4 with a 2-3 and three record. Both teams getting ready to come out onto the pitch. The Lady Tigers lost a tough one. one nothing to the Jinx Trojans, so the, the boys will look to even the night with a win over the Trojans. Yeah, and this game right here is a big one for the Tigers as this is a rematch game from last year's state championship where the Tigers did lose to the Jinx Starting Trojans. So, and you were at that contest Yes, sir, as I well. was. So they're going to name these starting lineups soon. Jack Franklin was their superstar goalie for the Trojans last um, in in the final, and he's still here. Number seven, Simon Sang. Number thirteen, Gael Cordova. Number fourteen, Mason Winters. Number fifteen, Kong Mayak. Number seventeen, Jonathan Mojica. I figured. Number 19, Julian I figured since he was Sam, I might as well just take Number him. I didn't. We aren't live, right? No. Okay, no, perfect. We're clear. Yeah, That's I why realized. I'm talking to him. Yeah. You're fine. He started. Thank you for sticking with us. Broken Arrow Tigers soccer. Five and one Tigers hosting the Jinx Trojans. Two and three on the year so far. And like I said, Broken Arrow is a top District 3 standings while Jinx is in fifth place in District 4 with a two and three mark. The Tigers are coached by Jordan Schmoker and the Jinx Trojans are coached by Eric Marshall. 
Yes, sir. We're going to walk through the starting lineup for the Tigers. Tigers at goalie. We have Mr. E. Boss himself, Evan Boss at goalie. We have number two, Derek Roberts, playing the defense. Jack attack, Mr. Jack Hendrickson, number three, playing that defensive position. We have Cam Padworth playing that center defensive mid. Josh and Goy playing that striker. Mario Narjano playing that striker. We have Ben Osler playing that defense. Alex Morofsky playing on the attack. Tristan McGuller playing on that defensive side. Charlie Baker, Mr. Singer, playlist artist man himself at the defensive side. Then we have Javier Mangales on the defensive side as well. And then for the Jinx Trojans, we have uh, at goalie, we have Jack Franklin. We have Jason Baker on the defensive side. Um, we have Nick Treat at the mid. We have Simon Sang at the forward. We have Gail, Gail Cordana. Um, we have Mason Winters, Kong Myatt, Jonathan Motika, number 17, Julian Dubs, number 19, Dosen Coop, number 21, and then last but not least, Jason Nguyen, number 23, for the Trojans as we get started off on this pitch. And some other notes for you for the Jinx Trojans. Nick Treat is committed to RSU, and Jack Franklin, UMSL. Yeah, and this team is definitely a different team than they were at the state championship. They lost some key pieces, as you can tell, with that 2-3 and three record. Um, they used to be in dominant, so this year it's a bit of a different look for them, but nothing they can't adjust to having that experience, especially with that goalie position. Derek Roberts with a good give-and-go to Javi, but they're going to lose it. <coughs> now, this should be a more fast-paced game than the last game. I mean, these two teams have a lot of history within each other, and it's like a good, good rivalry clash within each other, so we should see... Some great ball. As Osborne will throw it in for the Tigers. Tried to throw it in traffic. And Trojans take over, but Good. Tigers get it right back. It's Javier. Osborne. I hear your fellow Jungle Squad members down there. Yeah, here's some chance right there, right there. Charlie Baker, good pressure defensively right there. And Cam Herbert's going to get get possession of that ball, take it easy, give it out to Ben Osborne on that right side. Nice footwork by Osborne. You know, Jack Attack right there, number three, is committed to NSU to play some soccer over there. A lot of soccer guys, a lot of BS soccer guys end up do going to NSU to play soccer, so it's nice to see him carrying on that tradition. Osborne's got two goals on the year. Javi's got one. Mario's got one. Good save right there by Evan Boss. And that was a strike by Nick Treat. But Evan was there. He's going to pitch it right out to Ben Osborne. Tigers working quickly so far in this contest. Alex Morosi getting his first action on his side of the field. You know, Dan, um, I'm close friends with the, the two main strikers on the on this BA Tigers team. is number seven, number 14, um, Josh Ngoi and um, Morofsky. And that's a good move by the Trojans. But Osmer's going to clear it out before anything can happen. And Morofsky's going to get possession of that ball, get something going. Yeah, smart move by Osborne to clear that one out. As Franklin was there on the attack. Jack's going to give it to Javi. Javi's going to go back to Osborne. Tigers just taking it easy, being being smart with the ball, just looking for their openings. But kind of back to what I was saying earlier, I'm close with um, number seven, number 14, Alex Morofsky and Justin Goy. And we kind of had a little bet, and I was like, you know what, if, if, if I could bet on high school soccer and I, and I put the over on 13 and a half goals, are you guys hitting it? And they said yes, without a doubt. They said that they would both get 20. They're both combined right now at six. And, you know, we still got a lot of season to go. So I hope to see them smash that, especially at this game today. Evan's going to clear that one out. I have no words. To Tristan. <laughs> Why no words? <laughs> it's a good dish to Ngoy. And he's going to give it to Morofsky. Morofsky looking for the opening. He's going to cross that one. Tigers trying to get on the attack. We've got a chance. That was Mario. Pebworth, good ball, good ball skills keeping it. Ngoy's going to get it. And that, looked, that was a promising drive right there. Good start by the Tigers. It might not be done. Nope. Goes back to the Trojans. Good header by Tristan. Or Charlie Baker, I'm sorry. 
36 minutes left, it's still nil. A lot of strength right, right so far from these two offenses. You can see how they're like going straight at it, forcing, trying to get as, as, as close as they can. That one's gonna go out of bounds. So we'll go back to the Tigers. You know, this is the complete opposite weather that we had for the girls game. You know, girls, we had all clear suns. It was great, nice weather. Now we got some windy, you know, a little bit, little bit, a little bit of coldness to it. Not gonna lie, I can't. I will say, so it's in a, a bit, bit, bit of a different feel. But Tigers did come back last week for playing like 30 degree weather, with some little gusty over there. So this is nothing for them. Yeah, the weather has definitely changed in this second half, or excuse me, in this in this second game tonight. We'll try to check on some scores from you from the boys' side of things. Let me get that out to Narjano, or Naranjo, I apologize. Everything is just getting underway. No one has found the back of the net for our scores from around the area, but we will keep tabs on that for you. Hopefully we'll be the first team to do so. Good move, good spin right there by Ngoi. Try to get something going for him, but. Straight to the face of Ben Osborne. Yeah, Osborne took a header right there. And that's Tiger ball right there. The Toughness out of Osborne. Now Osborne, Cameron Pebworth, um, and, and Jack Henderson, those are those are three guys coming back. I mean, they're pro and Mario Nar Narano, those are guys who did did end up like starting and playing really, really good minutes last year in the state tournament, state championship for our guys. So having those guys out there who have experience for the younger ones, maybe the guys like Josh, who's like an upcoming like rising star for this team, having that out there is going to be a huge piece for us. 34 minutes to go here in the first. Javi's going to get a good job stealing that ball. And it's going to go out of team. bounds, and Osborne's going to throw it in for the Tigers. With a two ante, yeah, he had Don't Send Coop trying to reach over there, try to save that ball, but he didn't. He couldn't get to it. And Morofsky is going to try to dish that one back out. I think Tristan has it, and Tigers just going to reset off and defensively, get it back to their defense. So far, the Tigers have been the aggressor in this first half. Osborne still with the ball. Trying to find the corner, but it goes out of bounds. Good shot take with his left. Strong, strong kick right there. If a Jinx Trojan was not there off of that deflect, I think it could have been a goal right there. But great job by the Trojans staying there, putting their body out there to make sure that ball does not go in the net. But now Tigers have a huge opportunity. They, they've got some size on that attack, so they can get a good header in here, potentially get a goal. Morosi's going to get that one in there. Bouncing up in the air, but the Jinx gobble it up. Their goalkeeper, Franklin. And Jack Franklin, fun fact, he is the um, starting kicker for the Jinx Trojans, so he ended up going to, like, in, in football. He ended up going over there to play in the state championship. They got runner-up to Bixby, but that's an interesting fact for him. Kind of we talked about earlier about how soccer can correlate to the football playing area, and that's kind of what it is for him. Good challenge right there by Charlie Baker. Down to 32 minutes left. I think that's going to be a corner kick for the Trojans. So hopefully the Tigers can make sure that nothing, Thank you, the no the bad turnouts from this corner and just get it out of there. So on the corner kick, trying to get a header. Good awareness by Josh and Goy, trusting his goalie. Goalie put his hands on, he said, I got it, I got it, I got it. And Goy just let it happen. Good awareness. Right there. Just honestly, just chemistry like that from a team like this is what you expect. Yeah, Boss gobbled it up. So Tigers will take over. Tigers are trying to be patient. Jack looking for the open man. He's just going to give it back out to Evan. I mean, this Tigers team, they're just taking it easy. They're not rushing it, not trying to play. Not trying to rush anything. They're just taking it easy little by little. They understand that the moment is going to come if they start playing, if they keep playing like this. Osborne's going to head that one, and Javi's going to try to body him out, use his speed. Great job right there by him. He's going to push for the attack. Javi's still staying on his feet. And Pebble's going to get that one. 
And the Trojans get it right back off of the steal by Nick Treat. Now Trojans have a promising look right there. That's a great cross over there. As they have that right side to themselves. Good, good ball moves right there. But Charlie Baker right there to make sure nothing happens. And Mario Naranjo gets that there and tries to get some offense going. Baker's going to take time with it. As they're pushing, Treat's going to take a shot, but good defense right there by the Tigers, and Baker's going to try to keep it in to force it from not being a corner, but they're going to end up still getting that corner. Corner for Trojan. So another corner kick for Nick Treat, who will be playing soccer for the Hillcats after he graduates. Yeah, funny enough, that is where we have the state championship, so it's kind of cool to see that he is committing there whenever we always go play over there for state. They're going to get another corner kick, another opportunity as Tigers did clear it out, but did clear it out, but they ended up getting another opportunity at a corner kick. And it'll be treat again. Nice defense by the Tigers in the middle. Good job getting it back in there to give him another opportunity for Jinx. They're just trying to create something. Great defense right there by Charlie Baker. I might start breaking out singing a song after that one. And he's going to lose, not stay on his feet, but good call by the ref right there. Baker with some magician-type work with his feet. They're going to have him reset because they did it in the wrong spot. Derek Roberts was on the attack there for the Tigers. Hendrickson doing a good job. Running the offense himself as a defensive guy. Looking for that cross. He was looking for Morofsky, but a little too much sauce on it. That one's going to go out. Goal kick. Goal kick for Jinx. Just over 10 minutes have passed here in the first. Still scoreless. Good job applying that pressure as an offensive guy is what Josh Goy is doing. He's going to get an opportunity at something as Morofsky is going to take the shot. That one's off the mark, though. But that's just a good feel to start this game off. I mean, Tigers feels they've had more shots on goal than the Trojans have had. So kind of just keeping that going will be a good thing. So far, like you said at the beginning, you wanted to see a strong at attack out of the Tigers, and they've done just that. Going for that ball is Julian Tubbs, and they're going to call that one on the Tigers as Tubbs is trying to get that ball. That's going to give him an opportunity at a free kick. Trojan free kick. So hopefully Tigers can do their job what they've been doing these past 13 minutes. As we hear some, you can't do that chance from the Trojan side. Dosen Cup is going to line up for this free kick. It looks like they're going to go for a cross, so it's going to be kind of just a little, little bit over the top, and they're just going to go push and try to get that, get that ball in that net. And the kick is up. But Great it's job. saved by Boss. There's a lot of bodies there. She got it. She got out of there. Great effort. Good from job, Robert. Goy. And Goy just keeping it out of there, doing his job. And Javi's going to get it. Now the Tigers have a chance to just reset and get something going. Roberts is going to give it to Naranjo. Naranjo back to Javi. And Tigers, they're just playing give and go. Just give it to me and I'll go. Simple as that. So great job by the Tigers. Camp Peb's going to get it to Morofsky. And morofsky has got some guys. Tigers on the move, JoJo. Good ball movement. And almost really close. Roberts 
Roberts had the right vision right there by getting that ball. He had the opportunity, gave it right back to Morowski, but just put a little bit too much to it in that left area. Too much for Morowski as Jack Friendly got that ball. Like the ball movement from the Tigers, pushing it up the field on the other side. Just needed a few more inches, and they would have been able to get it in the net. 100%. But it shows how unselfish this team is. I mean, you got three dominant goal scorers in Roberts, in Gooey, and Morovsky, but they're just going give and go, trying to get something going for their team. Osborne staying on his feet. And they're going to say that one's on us. I don't know how that was, but... He ran right into Mason Winters. Winters did a good job right there, either selling it or just, I don't know what it was, but did a great job right there keeping it on their side. As Jason Newman is going to be the guy who kicks it off for them, one of their team captains. And that's going straight to the Tigers. Now I'd like to see something special out of Hendrickson yeah, this he, evening. He can do a lot. That's our NS, that's our NSU guy right there. Him, Cam Pebworth, they're both, um, I believe Cam Pebworth, they're both committed to go play at NSU. I know for sure Jack Hendrickson, but I might be wrong about Cam Pebworth. But those are some guys playing at the collegiate next level, so hopefully we can see something great out of them today, as we already have seen some good, good ball out of most of these guys out here. Good moves by Simon Sang right there to get something going, but Tigers get maintained possession of the ball. Osborne throwing it in, goes to Roberts on the near side right in front of us. Didn't get much going there, so it'll go back to the Trojans. Great job by right Charlie Becker keeping it, but then he loses it. A little bit of a miscommunication right there as Cam Pebb and Roberts kind of move forward whenever Charlie Baker thought they were going to stay. A little bit of miscommunication, but great job by the Tigers just not allowing anything bad to happen right there. Ref's talking to the sideline for some reason, but Javi's going to keep it. Now Tigers got, they've got some momentum hopefully going for him as Josh is going to look for Alex Morovsky. They keep it in, great shot, great effort right there by Tristan to keep that in. Jinx got a little bit of a push from Simon Sang on Nagoyi. Stayed on his feet though. Yeah, Jojo. great job right there. Saying how he tried to have a good fight for that ball. But Tigers keep put possession. It seems that seems to be a story of it. I mean, that's the right now the team that has the most momentum is the team that has has kept possession for the longest. And that's right now that's the Tigers. We have the more, more shots on goal. We've done more on offense. You know, JoJo, I think this is going to come down to endurance, too, because the way these two teams are just going at it with one another. I mean, and also with endurance comes depth. I mean, if mm -hmm. you're going to have those guys who can be endurance, I mean, some are, some will be, some won't. So that's why you got those subs that are going to come in. I mean, who has more value within their subs? And good attack on that bar right there by the Trojans. Yeah, that, that save, it, or not save attempt, but that block attempt slide there, tackle, slide right tackle there. really yep. helped out. That was great. Went straight for the ball, didn't hit, didn't hit ankle or shin. Good no call by the ref. That's just clean and crisp defense right there. Hendricks is going to gain. I don't believe we of it. had a penalty so far in this game. Maybe no. one. No, no fouls have been called. I mean, to see a penalty would be pretty, pretty rare if that does happen. But both these games, I mean, the girls' game and this game has been pretty, pretty clean, pretty fair so far. That's a crazy. Another great challenge right there. I believe that was by Tristan. I'm not sure. It might have been. That was actually Alex Morovsky. One of our um, forward guys taking on that defensive role, stealing that ball, giving an opportunity for the Tigers. And just like that, from the left side of the field to the right side of the field, Tigers got a chance. One's going to stay with Broken Arrow. Osborne wanting to send it back in. He, he will send it back in. Yeah, a good slide right there by Mojica, making sure that he doesn't have any, any pressure on his side, just taking it out of there. Good clearance. He's going to throw it out to Ngoi. They're going to say it's a push off. Free kick, broken break. arrow. And this right here. This could be huge at this moment right here with 21. 
until half. I mean, refs, ref is giving a talk to um, to Mason Winters as he he kind of like kicked the ball out of frustration. I don't know what it was, but ref giving him a stern little talk. Just got to keep him keep him in check because that was a little bit of an uncalled for reason. I don't know why he had did that, but Morovsky will do the penalty kick duties here. And knowing Morovsky, Morovsky's got a strong right leg right there. He can go for that top left corner or right corner. Get that in the net, or he can just take the easy, easy cross to his teammates. He's going to take the clearance. I think at this point in the game, that was the right decision. I would say. No reason to. Charlie Baker doesn't get control of it, so Simon Sang is all alone. Going to get a pass, but Cam Pedworth is there, and Boss is just going to clear it out smart. of there. Smart. Very smart for the Broken Arrow Tigers right Ball there. Ball had a little bit of backspin on it, so didn't go as far as he wanted it to be, but. 20 minutes now. Javi's doing great defensively. But great job right there. To Winters. By Nick Treat getting it to Winters. It's going to go out of bounds. And they're going to say that's still Jake's ball. Good job by Ben Osborne and Jack Henderson closing in that closing in that side, making sure there's no gaps. Don't let them sneak, slip through any creases. Just great job doing their job defensively. As the Trojans are going to sub out some people. Looks like the Tigers are also going to sub in Marcus Givens. A good friend of mine. He's waiting over there to get subbed in. As Trojans are going to have to take advantage of this huge opportunity they got right here. He's splitting the defense. Getting through. Great job by Evan Boss. Getting his hands out there. Not letting anything happen. And Ngoy's going to keep that. He's got the speed to take that all himself. Playing some magic with his feet now. With the shot, good strong shot. But Jack Franklin is there to Good save look that. as well, JoJo. Great he had, look. He had a great look. Franklin just lined up in the wrong spot for the Tigers. He's got a boot of a leg with all these, but... <laughs> Powell's going to look for the open man. Down to 18 minutes and 40 seconds. And I will say this game is moving by really fast. Osborne just kicks it away. Getting over there to Tristan Crow. And Trojans get it right back, but now Charlie Baker's going to get back. But yeah. nobody's there. It's a miscommunication between them and Tristan, and that's going to go back to the Trojans. Substitution for Broken Arrow. So coming in. Number four, Jack Hendrickson. Jack Hendrickson. Number 20, Marcus Givens. And number 99, Hector Pacheco. And Jack Irvine, Marcus Givens, and Hector Pacheco are coming in for Javi, Alex Morofsky, and I believe, I'm not sure who the third is, but those are the guys that are coming in. Hopefully they can get some fresh legs out there. And great, great job for the Tigers so far. I mean, we're about... About 20, 20, 20 plus minutes into this game right now, and Tigers seem to be the team that is in most possession. They have the advantage. They have the momentum also. So if they can just keep on carrying that on, it should be should be a goal to come soon. And to kind of reset it for you, this is a non-district game. Broken Arrow is a top District 3 standings, while Jinx is in fifth in District 4 with a 2-3 and three record. We want to give a shout-out to our one club sponsors, First National Bank of Broken Arrow, Ascension St. John, Tulsa Bone & Joint, TTCU Federal Credit Union, The Arrow Group, and Quick Trip. Say it once, I'll say it again. Those places are great. Go check them out. Under 17 minutes to go now here in the first. Colby Niles in the game now looking for his open man. So you're going to get it back to Treat. Treat's going to look for the open guy in Treat on the far side. Flips it in. Good header by Henderson to clear it out. And that's going to be a corner kick for the Trojans. 
it seems that the Chargers have maintained having possession on this side, but the Tigers have had more breakaways going on towards the side. So it feels like our defense is leading into more offensive things happening. That's why we have these more of these breakaway moments. But the Trojans, while on, the, on their side, they're keeping possession on this side, getting these corner kicks and opportunities, but they're not doing much with it. So it's really going to be about who can get this ball in this net first. 16 minutes to go now. High corner kick right there. As Markins Givens is going to get that one to clear it out. Smart by the Tigers. It's on the near side and That's right in front of the bench. The Tigers. Jinx has pretty much played keep away through this first half of play. Yeah, they haven't really been too aggressive or strong. They've had their corners, but that's going to be a missed, a missed opportunity. opportunity right there by Jason Baker as the ball is a little bit too, too um, up for him to get that, but the Tigers can hopefully capitalize on that moment as Ben Osborne's going to go for the throw-in. They're going to get that one out to Julian Tubbs. Tubbs is going to maintain it. And Tristan's there defensively. They're going to get the cross. Going for the shot. Good save right there by Evan Boss. As Jason Baker got the shot. It defected off of a Tiger teammate. But luckily, Evan Boss had good awareness right there. Made sure nothing bad turned out out of it. Jack Irvine is going to box out, keep that ball to himself. Get it out to Naranjo. Naranjo's going to give it to Jack Hendrickson. Hendrickson's going for the cross, too. They were trying to find a seam. Givens they get the it. Givens. Givens over in the corner. And it's not off sides. He's clean, so he's got an opportunity right here. Trying to get a shot inside. But Jinx with some tough defense. Now the ball's going the other way. Trojans get the nice bounce. Boss just sends it, though, the other way. And Naranjo now's got he's got numbers and opportunity. As Tristan's gonna keep it in. That one's gonna go out of bounds. Good awareness right there by Nick Troy to go put his put his foot in the dirt and slide tackle make sure nothing can turn out of that one. Under 14 minutes now. Naranjo's gonna get back to Tristan. For an open man, and oh, what that what could have been out of that one? That pass was just off the mark. We're hearing haze. I'm feeling nays. That was not nothing crazy out of that one. Good job by the Tigers, being aggressive and keeping that ball on our side. Givens, he's looking for the cross to Ngoy. and if Ngoy had kept control of that one, that could have been something for the Tigers. It was a beautiful pass to Ngoy. Yeah, Givens, good awareness with that left. Strong kick with that left foot right to Ngoy's chest and hit Ngoy's chest, but right into Jason Newman's hand. Jason Newman, he just kicked it out of there. But hopefully Tigers can get a reset button with this throwing right here and get something going. 13 minutes now. Still set at zero. High boot by Jack Jack Franklin. Henderson's going to head that one out. Good steal by Marcus Givens. Yeah, good, good field awareness there. Givens on the near side, trying to get a body on Niles. How about this? Good Tigers effort. potentially check. Nope. Pacheco spoke did, too soon. Yeah, Pacheco and Naranjo did a good job kind of double teaming that one, make sure that they both got that steal, but a little too much with it. They're going to go for the cross. And Goy is there. Good ball control. And Goy's got it. Good defense right there. Stellar defense. By, I believe, number 15. The 
Trojans will get the ball back. Tigers have to keep maintaining that, having that momentum on their side. As Cam Pebble is going to challenge that one, hopefully get a steal. Down to 11 minutes. Inbounding it is Jason Baker. Or throwing it in, rather, excuse me. Inbounding it. That was a. I didn't, I didn't even catch that one. Good, great job by the, Tiger, by the Trojans right there, but Charlie Baker gets the good clearance, makes sure nothing can came out of that one. As the Trojans are getting some subs in, as they're going to sub out Jason Newman and news, everyone. Pizza is now Colby $2 Niles. At concessions. That's right, $2 until supplies last. Big announcement, pizza is now $2 at concessions, and I'm probably going to go at halftime. I'll take a pepperoni, JoJo. Okay. I, I'm more of a pepperoni guy. Good throwing right there. Givens. Goes back to Osborne. That was a risky one right there. As now the Chargers have possession back of it in their area. And it's Treat. He sends it to the far side to Baker. Under 10. That's going to go out of bounds. And it's going to go back to Broken Arrow. Yeah, Tristan. Tristan's going to have that throw in over there. Looking for the open man. He's going to throw it deep to Pacheco. Jack Irvine's going to have possession of it. And again, it's a Charlie Baker who's going to reset it back to Evan Boss. Probably going to see a boot. A short one to Ben Osborne. Osborne sends it in the middle to Pacheco. See, Tigers are just being really patient. They're going to just get, they're going to take what's given to them. They're not going to force anything. And that's going to be a key thing into winning this game. Henderson's going to look for that cross to Ngoy. And there, and ref's going to call that one. As I will say, I felt that one was like a flop, but and that was on Gail Cordona. He's going to get back up on his feet. It's actually on Con Matt. Correction to oh, Matt. But he's back up on his feet, so that's good to see. Down to 8-19. Almost has an eight minutes to go, and it's been a pretty solid match. That should be an offsides right there, but regardless of it. Boss like a boss hauls it in. Good wordplay. He's going to throw one, that one out to Ben Osborne. Pebworth has it, but he lost it. And they're just going to boot that one. It goes way out of bounds. You know, this one kind of has the same feel as that girls game, kind of like a 0-0, but it's kind of on the flip side. It's the the um, Trojans in the girls game have momentum. It feels like in this guy game, the Tigers have momentum. Offensively, is Pebworth going to do some some skills with the ball? Great spin moves and everything. Is they're going to keep possession of it? Irvine's going to lose it though, and good no call by the ref, and he's going to end up calling it back. Great pick for the Trojans. So under seven minutes to go. Treat sends it to his teammate. They're going to go for the cross, but even if the had went over there, I it feels like his guy was completely offsides. I don't know. If, I believe that was Dosen Coop 
that was on that opposite side of it, but that would have been clear offsides if he had gotten the ball. Tigers less than, almost less than six minutes to go, just gonna keep playing the same ball they've been playing all day, all day today. Good set up by Jack. As all the defenders are on this this right side, this is a huge opportunity for the Tigers. Is they don't have numbers on that side. That one's gonna go out of bounds. Coach Smoker instructing his troops to find something on offense here. Givens just tried to get his leg up in the air to block Deflected, that pass. There was no need to. It's just going to be Tiger's ball. So they're going to go ahead and throw this one in. Osborne. So keeping it, Givens. So he's going to give that one to Pacheco. Givens is going to get it back. And that was clean, but oh, ho, ho. Ref is going to call that one. That was tough. That was very tough. That's going to go against Mario. Good job being there. It was Hendrickson. Good moves by Marcus, getting it to Irvine. And Nagoya has an opportunity to get at that, but he's going to stay in his zone. Givens trying to come up on his defender. Pacheco's got it, but he almost lost his control on his feet. He's going to get back control of it. Dangerous. Dangerous pass, trying to reset it, but Tigers do a good job of keeping it there. That'll be an easy reset there. Osborne on the near side. Nice header by Pacheco. Goy can get there. As soon as we be checking in will be Angel Didios waiting on the side to sub in. Good cross right there. He's got an open man, but that one just a little too far. And they're going to say corner, but that one was clearly off of the Jinx player. So at three and a half minutes. Oh, no, they're going to they're gonna switch it to goal kick. It'll be a goal kick with three and a half minutes for the Tigers. Yeah, Didios is coming in for Josh and Goy. Get him some rest and time as he's been putting in some good effort this game. That's Tristan, a.k.a. Tea Time is what he said to me. Is what he goes by. So he's going to dish that one off. And good shot on goal. Really close shot. Mario Naranjo, great attempt at that one. If he had put a little bit more height on that one, he could have said that could have been a goal. But great shot on goal right there. As Jack Fletcher was very well aware of that one coming. Yeah, put his hands out there. Good save. Shot just inches off the mark. Bet, pro most promising shot we've seen all day today so far. But now they're going to be in the corner, and Marcus Gibbons is taking this corner. Pacheco comes up with it, but good clearance right there by the Trojans. Trojans That's get Dose, it right back. Dosen Coop. He's got numbers. He can look cross field on that side. And he did, but a little bit too much on it. That win must have played a factor, and now it's Tigers ball again. And now with less than two minutes to go, it's crunch time. You know, regardless of Jinx's record at two and three, you knew it was going to be a dogfight. Oh, 100%. These, these two teams are always going back and forth. I mean, 
they have the same coach that they had whenever they went to the state championships. So they have that experience. Same goalies. Same. Some of these guys had play on that team that won that worst state champs last year. So nothing's going to change. Although the record may not be that promising. I mean, at the same time, they mostly just they didn't start off the way they expected. Good ball, put. Good ball control by Naranjo, keeping that one down. But Trojans keep keep possession of it. Down to a minute twenty. Still scoreless. That one should go back to the Tigers. Nope, it's going to go to the Trojans. Both teams look a little gassed out there. Yeah, most of those guys, I mean, there has been some subs, but the, been de the defensive the guys, minutes. it hasn't been many subs. I mean, obviously, their their offensive guys, their forwards, they've been they've been getting subbed out, but their defensive guys are staying in there, so they're pretty they're pretty gassed. And Good effort out of the Tigers. Great job by T time putting that effort in, but it's just a one man show right now. So he's got to get time to reset. They got a man Dan on the far side. And he's gonna stay down. I'm not sure who that is. So with 15 seconds, we'll take a quick timeout on Aerovision. It's 0-0 here at Kirkland. Stay with us. At Ascension St. John, you'll find advanced heart care, brain and spine care, and personalized cancer care. And we excel just as much in the things that can't be measured. Listening more closely, caring more compassionately. Tulsa Bone & Joint, Northeast Oklahoma's sports medicine experts. We are pleased to help you and the athletes in your life with a number of surgical and non-surgical options. Tulsa Bone & Joint is proud to serve as team orthopedist for local high schools such as Broken Arrow, Owasso, Sepulpa, Casha Hall, and Bishop Kelly. We're also proud to be team orthopedist for FC Tulsa. Tulsa Bone & Joint, moving life forward. <laughs> Life happens in a hurry. Our money experts will help you keep up. TTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. If you and your family have been waiting for the perfect time to jump into your dream home, it's here. We make buying a new home as easy as it is exciting with quick credit approvals and great rates. First National Bank of Broken Arrow. First people put people first. At Ascension St. John, you'll find advanced heart care, brain and spine care, and personalized cancer care. And we excel just as much in the things that can't be measured. Listening more closely, caring more compassionately. If you and your family have been waiting for the perfect time to jump into your dream home, it's here. We make buying a new home as easy as it is exciting with quick credit approvals and great rates. First National Bank of Broken Arrow. First people put people first. And welcome back to Kirkland Soccer Complex. 15 seconds to go. Jinx with the ball. They get a pass inside, but Boss just falls on it. And that's probably going to do the first half of play. He's picking it up, and he chucks it out towards the middle, and that will do the first half of play. It's 0-0. Zero, zero. We'll have the second half coming up on Aerovision. In 1989, the First National Bank of Broken Arrow established the first Achievement Scholarship Award to help graduating seniors who they or their parents were bank customers to help with the cost of a college education. And since that time, we've paid out more than $300,000 in scholarships to 40 students. I am going to TCC for dental hygiene and in total TCC is quoting about $30,000 for that program. So this 
scholarship will provide me with almost a third of my entire cost for school, which is really, really generous. It's relieving to know that I won't have to worry about such a huge portion of the education. A scholarship like this will absolutely change my life because being a hygienist, you have the liberty of being very flexible with your schedule, and so that gives me the opportunity to be a mom and all of that stuff, but it also just gives me time to stay with, active within the community and maybe do stuff with First National Bank. Um, volunteer with Broken Arrow Neighbors or volunteer with charities and stuff like that. It's just having that profession be available to me is just really exciting. The bank provides the scholarship in order to provide financial support to students who face rising costs of a college education. This is just one way that the bank chooses to give back to the community as well as customers and their children who are graduating seniors. Holden Lord kicks off his day at Vanguard Academy, gearing up for his final year of high school. Without skipping a beat, he jumps right into an after-school program at Timber Ridge Elementary, filled with snacks and engaging activities to stimulate young minds, with Holden taking a leading role in the program. We take care of them, we let them play around, we'll go outside for a couple hours. They could possibly get inspired to do become a teacher or become their and life goals. And it's not just fun and games. Holden's impact reaches beyond the playground, leaving a mark on the kids he interacts with. Like if you're swinging, he'll come over there and push you really high and he'll play tag every once in a while and he's quick to make sure all of us like stay safe. So if a kid gets hurt or if a kid gets mad, He'll make sure to like separate it. We're figuring it out. This is such a great opportunity for him to be able to really get that experience and make sure it's something he enjoys and get really good at it. For Holden, it's the memories he shares with students from after school activities and jumpstarting his career path that have him excited about his future of becoming a teacher himself. What are we playing? Yeah. It's kind of like soccer. It's important to me. It's important to see other people happy and successful. I want everybody in life to have an opportunity to become what they want to be. I love watching him work with little kids because I think he just has such a happy personality that it's really easy for him to inspire others. So I can't wait to see him be a teacher. I think he's going to be really great at it. Embracing education, lighting up young minds, and infusing a dash of fun in every day. With AeroVision, I'm Dan Hawk. kinds of fun activities here at the Sequoia Middle School Gymnasium from musical chairs to even a cheer competition. Check it out. Kind of describe to me what each kid is going to be involved in today. So we're going to have some relays, but every student is involved with a, a cheer for their grade. We're going to have a chant so that everyone gets that school spirit. Realizing that it's more than just education, we can have fun as well. I mean, I feel like when kids are feeling loved and accepted and feel like a part of a community, they're so much more willing and likely to excel and to want to be a part of something bigger. And that just feeds into the community. So it starts at the school level and then it can bud out from there. I, it seems like Sequoia always puts on the best pep rallies, but yeah. this one like none other. Tell me about why this is so much fun to be a part of this today. Because everybody else is having fun and you like the vibe and the teachers work so hard to get us where we're at right now and we have people like Jasper and Waylon that just care so much for the school and really want to get everybody hyped up because you never know what other people are going through and it can really just be like a good thing to put on. What, what's more fun, seeing these kids get involved or seeing us old teachers and myself get involved with these activities as well? It's a little bit of both. I mean, seeing the kids get involved and get together and work together is awesome, but also seeing the teachers go out and break some hips is pretty fun too. Well, that does it for us here at Sequoia Middle School. Be sure to check us all across the school district with AeroVision. Until next time, go Tigers.
a career fair inside the Sequoia Middle School Gymnasium, a perfect opportunity for young minds to jumpstart their career path for later in life. It's cool. I, I like it a lot. You know, there's a lot of different things you can do, uh, a lot of places to check out. I'm very indecisive, so when I see it, like the things that we have here, I kind of like get an idea of what we're going to get. For the future, I want to be a doctor. I want to be an anesthesiologist. So I'm really trying to see what career like here has that. Really, there is a lot of jobs here that is very inspiring. I really want to play baseball, but if not, I want to I want to be a businessman and own businesses. I want to be like in, in the businesses with like houses and stuff like that. There's certain kids that don't just want to do one thing and there's multiple things that you can like choose from. I want to be an ultrasound tech. It's just something that I'm really passionate about just so I know when I am older what I would like be focused on. They make really good money too. There you go. This is an opportunity to see you get to pick what you learn about. You get, there's all these opportunities that you can have and pick from like AeroVision or like uh, the bank or the army or the police. So there's just a bunch of things that kids can learn about so they know what they're doing going forward. I've always wanted to go to college and this has really given me like the experience. I can ask other people for advice, but this is a lot more efficient personally. So I think that this is really helpful towards people who are looking for future jobs and future careers. Without a doubt, the future looks bright for these eighth graders. And the career fair at Sequoia Middle School is making it a reality. With AeroVision, I'm Dan Hawk. Tulsa Bone & Joint, Northeast Oklahoma's sports medicine experts. We are pleased to help you and the athletes in your life with a number of surgical and non-surgical options. Tulsa Bone & Joint is proud to serve as team orthopedist for local high schools such as Broken Arrow, Owasso, Sepulpa, Kasha Hall, and Bishop Kelly. We're also proud to be team orthopedist for FC Tulsa. Tulsa Bone & Joint, moving life forward. Life happens in a hurry. Our money experts will help you keep up. TTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. At Ascension St. John, you'll find advanced heart care, brain and spine care, and personalized cancer care. And we excel just as much in the things that can't be measured. Listening more closely, caring more compassionately. If you and your family have been waiting for the perfect time to jump into your dream home, it's here. We make buying a new home as easy as it is exciting with quick credit approvals and great rates. First National Bank of Broken Arrow. First people put people first. And welcome back to the Kirkland Soccer Complex. We're at half. Broken Arrow and Jinx scoreless. Some scores from around the area for you. Yukon and Piedmont. 1-0 Piedmont. Mustang over Southmore 1-0. 2-0 Deer Creek over Edmond Santa Fe. And the rest of the games are still scoreless with Sand Springs, Edison Prep, Fayetteville Union, um, along with Eisenhower and MacArthur. So those are your scores from the 6A level around the area. We got 30 seconds until the end of half. We'll have the second half and the conclusion here at the Kirkland Soccer Complex. Coming up in just a minute, we'd like to thank our one club sponsors, First National Bank of Broken Arrow, Ascension St. John, Tulsa Bone and Joint, TTCU Federal Credit Union, the Arrow Group, and Quick Trip. And off to our Tiger Threads. Shout out to our Tiger Threads located at 191st East Albany, East Albany 61st Street at the high school. They're open from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Broken Arrow Public School staff members receive additional discounts. Also, Tiger Heads is moving to the new event center that will be open very, very soon. And sneak peek announcements. I don't know if I can announce this, but we're just going to say it for all the loyal viewers in here. We will be having a pep assembly in the new place. The date I will keep disclosed and the theme I will keep disclosed. But just keep you aware that is what's happening. Just keep you in the know. Can you give me three themes, but one of them being the correct theme, can you give me three themes? And I won't play the guessing game, but give me three themes for this potential pep rally. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory was talked about. Okay. 
we talked about like a a BA tour type of thing, like a like a uh, like playlist, you know, like, like Taylor Swift like Eras tour. Um, boxing. You can, can scratch that yeah. Taylor Swift. We've had enough of Taylor. <laughs> and then we um, boxing. A boxing. Boxing. Thing. boxing yeah. thing. Do you have a favorite boxer, JoJo? Currently, or just all time? Oh, all time. I'm I'm a, I'm a big Mayweather guy. But if we're talking like current, I would say like you know like I go like a simple like Tank. I'm a huge like Tank guy. Javante Davis. Um, let me think. Vasily Lomachenko. That's a lightweight that I like. Um, I don't like. Teofimo Lopez. Okay. Um, obviously, Jake Paul. I don't like Jake Paul because I respect a real boxer. You heard about Jake Paul, Mike Tyson boxing? Yeah, I heard, I heard <laughs> about that. Yeah. I'm more of an old school boxer guy. Who was your um, big Roberto boxer? Duran, Hands of Stone. I don't even know who that is. Yeah, we're talking the 60s and 70s. It's way before your time. I'm seeing a lot of head nods in this studio, so that's I tells also me like you're not Ru the only Ruben one. Hurricane Carter, too. Yeah, so. I'm lost. Our brother is lost. I'm a big boxing guy, but in I digress. So the second half underway will flip the field. So Jinx will get the ball. I mean, this is an opportunity. I mean, Tiger's a huge key point. She's got to capitalize on what they've been doing. What they've been doing is great. They just got to capitalize on it. Like they're getting to the goal. They're getting to the net. They're doing their job. Just got to capitalize and get it in the net. Waiting for them to start the contest. And here we go, underway in the second half. 0-0. Zero, zero. It's Marcus Givens out there. Yes, it is. On that far right side with the ball, but now it's out. Ben, Orbe, ben Osmore's going to go with the throw in. Jack Irvine looking back. He's going to get, get a calm little reset for the Tigers. This, the Jack attack himself gets it off to E-Boss. How many classes do you have with this group of seniors out here? Because So I, I will say, like, class-wise, I feel like whenever you're a senior, like, who you have classes with, it's not me. I have one of them in class. So there's uh, eight seniors. Goy with the pass, and that could be a potential penalty kick. But they're not going to call it. They're not going to call it. Eight seniors on this squad, JoJo. Yeah, I have one of them in my in my leadership class, and and um, but a lot of them I do you know I've had classes in the past with them, so and I, I see a lot of them in the halls and I like like talk to them so. So we're gonna have a corner kick from Javi. They're going to hold on to that's going to be a foul on the, on the Trojans. Before you kick, we're going to kick around. Hashtag, you cannot do that. So 38 minutes to go here. Good pass right there, almost good header right there. I believe it was by, I'm not sure who it was. Osborne in the right place on the other end. Oh, and that's Gavin, that's Gavin Dill out on the field. You know, that's one of my, another one of my good friends. Dilly, li little Dilly, I'm a, um, really close with his dad. You know, big Dilly, and this is little Dilly. So number 15, Gavin Dill with the header right there. That's a good nickname to have. Yep. Here, Rattler in the crowd. Yeah, they got their sound things. Soccer fans always have those. Like they're like gadgets that make noise. Dosun Coop has control of it, and they're going to steal that one. Good ball control by Naranjo. He's going to reset it and get it back to Osborne. That's an opportunity. But Henderson's going to close it down. As Javi's controlling the ball. 
Still plenty of time. Both these teams not giving much either any movement so far here in the second half. Yeah, it seems to be like just firm on the defensive side these two both these teams are doing. But Tigers had that huge opportunity earlier, almost got that chance. Osborne's going to cross that one to Pacheco. Pacheco just missed it. Barely. He's, he's, a, he's a tall guy. Very he, tall. And you can see him with the number 99 very well. Height is not listed on the roster, but he's a very tall, lengthy kid. You can say 100% above six feet. At least. Good defense right there. but A good clearance by Jack Attack right there. Great job. Thirty-five minutes to go. Givens tying his shoe, so there's stoppage, not on the clock, but just on the pitch. Great defense right there by the Tigers. As Ben Osborne just applying that pressure continuously, getting that ball away from them. Trojans are keeping it well on this side. Looking at this second half, it's been kind of all Trojans on the Tigers' side. I think we've had, what, one shot on goal? Yeah, one shot on goal, but I don't know if the Trojans really have either, but they're just doing a great job of just keeping possession on this side of the field. I think going to go for the shot, and that's really going nowhere. Way above Evan Boss's head. Goal kick, the broken arrow. Thirty-four minutes to go now. Seems just like the girls' game and the fact of no teams wanting to give in each other an edge to find the back of the net. Yeah, and they're doing both a great job defensively, just playing with a sound mind, also at the same time just taking advantage of their defense, using that opportunity to get some stuff on like offense. He's going to keep that in. He's just going to cross it. And that's got potential right there as Pacheco's going towards it. And Trojans are going to kick that one out of bounds. It's going to be thrown to the Tigers. The second half, though, is just flying, it seems like. Yeah, already. I mean, seven minutes in, it feels like, I mean, not much not much crazy gameplay going on. I mean, so 0-0 zero, zero across the board. Great job standing on his feet, Marcus Givens. He's going to go for an attack. And Ngoy had it. He was held, it looked like. If, uh, he had it, two guys side. all over it completely, but they had no call. And that's going to be a goal kick for the Trojans. Now, you brought up earlier that you and Nagoya are very close friends with one another. Yeah, I was I was really close with his brother, Elijah Ngoya, who played on the team. Then he could, He's playing at collegiate-level soccer now. but Where's he, he at? I'm not, I don't remember what college it is, but that's it's, okay. it's the next level. But um, I was closer with him first. And then in Goy, I mean, we just like little by little just conversated. And like the brother connection just kind of already hit. So at that point, it was just like oh, good job by Javi staying on his feet. But at that point, Goy, you know, we just like we, we were also like we had like leadership, not really like in the same class, but like by each other. Good cross right there by Givens, but nobody there to get it. As tea time's going to get control of that ball. Pacheco looking for the upper man. Tigers have a chance here. Javi's going to get it out to tea time. He's going to keep control of that ball. Javi has an opportunity to look for that cross. He's going to take it in himself. And if Tigers can keep it right here, there's going to be an opening soon. Osborne with the cross. That shot was just off the mark, but I think he was going in for an inside pass. Yeah, I don't know what the, if that was a cross or a shot, but either or it would have worked. In it was corner, close. That top left post that could have worked over there or it could have been a header to Javi, a little tapping, whatever it was, it was in a good spot, put it in the right spot Osborne did. And especially as a center back or as a right back guy coming from that spot over there, coming to play that attacking, attacking spot and getting that ball towards that net, you, you'd love to see that out of you guys.
Because they're going to take their goal kick. Yeah, you know, Franklin's got a boot of a leg. You know, I don't think it's ever discussed enough just how important the goalie position is at the high school level with being able to boot it out to midfield. And, oh. Uh, you know, the mental aspect of the game, JoJo, being in the net for – uh, 80 minutes in a contest, it, it's taxing. A million percent. You can either have like the most busiest day in your world or you can have like the <laughs> lightest day ever where it's like you're doing all the work and you're having to like worry about this team that's got like some insane attackers. Or you got the easiest job where it's like 5-0, your team's winning, you're just sitting out there, you're chillaxing. Like you could be out there, you could just like be singing a song to yourself, singing some country, just vibing. My broadcast career is complete. I never thought I'd hear the word chillaxing and on an actual broadcast. You know, whenever you bring an 18-year-old guy up in the booth, what do you expect? <laughs> <laughs> I bring him a little bit more of that that young flair. Yes, definitely so. He is the president of Broken Arrow High School. Uh, did you hand out suckers or anything? No, I didn't. My um, the um, student council president Parker Wagner, shout out to him, brought a Blackhawk to Broken Arrow High School. Um, he <laughs> he actually made. He said, "Don't be a dumb dumb. Vote Parker Wagner," and it would like be tied to the to that. I brought cupcakes. Ooh! Like the day. How many cupcakes? It was. I think it was about like thirty five. So it was like it wasn't like anything like too crazy. I wasn't gonna like drop like a hundred. Like I hate to tell you, Jojo, but that's not enough for the student body to well, get your vote in with well, thirty five cupcakes. I'm, I'm still here, am I? That's true. I'm still here. Got it. Yeah, everybody got a a nibble. <laughs> no, no, it was first come first serve. All I needed was thirty five to win. Just want to add, I didn't get a cupcake on Jojo's inauguration speech. I will say, Dan, you were not well. You might no. You might have been there during this time. Yeah, you know, I, I don't think I was. Uh, it's okay. Uh, maybe I get you a cupcake like the day that I leave. Trojans trying to work inside, but nothing doing. Tigers with some solid defense. That one's gonna go out of bounds. They say it was clean. The Trojan faithful said there was a trip, but I yeah the fans disagree. Were, the fans were begging for one right there as it was. It was Jonathan Mojica. Mojica, he had um, put some moves on the guys and went through, and it looked like he had got tripped or whatever it was, but refs didn't call it, kept it clean, fair play. And they've kept it that way the, for the majority of this contest. Oh, a million percent. It's been a pretty clean, like, fair match. I mean, you know, you know, soccer gets gets the, the take of everybody's like, oh, it's like one of those sports where everybody's flopping, like softies, all this stuff. And I mean, yes, you could say that, but, I mean, if you watched a game like this today, you wouldn't be able to say that. That's a good attack right there, and they're not going to – no call. No call once again. They're letting, Getting they're a letting chippy. him play. That one will be whistled, though. They it's, finally get their first that one. Was on that was a Carson McVicker fell to the ground. But was I don't that know Osborne? Who, I'm not sure who was on, but it's not going to be a PK. It was outside of the box. So they're going to have a really, really close to it free kick where they can just take a shot on goal. This is a huge, huge, huge moment. It could be a huge momentum shift for one of the other teams. So you gotta, you gotta make sure that you gotta keep, you gotta keep Mr. Boss ready to make sure that he does not have any ball come through there. So defense got to do a job of keeping that wall defense like really strong and make sure that nothing gets past. Him. And it is Jason Newman on the kick. That one's way off the mark. Not Great gonna job do anything. Right Great there. defense out of the Tigers. I believe Jojo. it was Givens or Pacheco. Most likely Pacheco. I mean that six Corner, two short. plus frame right there. Most likely was the reason that ball and they're getting hit up. But just great job by the Tigers keeping that wall over there to make sure that no ball gets in that net and keeping Evan comfortable. So the Trojans will go for a corner kick. And already almost less than 27 minutes to go in this game. Trojans trying to work, but that shot is way off the mark. That was Dosin Cup. He wants that one back. He had a great look, open angle. Everything that a soccer player would want, but it was just wide right. Seems like shades Bill. of the Buffalo Bills. Oh, that was a Ooh, good one. Any, any any Bills fans? I'm sorry I had to hear that, but Gail Cordona just came running back. I feel like he lost something. I don't know what it was, but 
Or what's that Cowboys kicker last year? Oh. I'm drawing a blank. What was was it number two? He's no longer with the Cowboys. I know that. <laughs> oh, and now they got a they got a stud now though. Yeah, they do. 26 minutes to go. As Jinx is on the attack again. Good job, for Irvine. Jack. Jack Henderson right there doing a great job. They call him the wall that stops the ball. Jack attack right there with a great job, not making the, letting anything go past him. Givens is going to have control of that ball. He's going to get stolen right there. Good, good effort by the Trojans getting that one taken away. Good job right there by Jack Henderson, clearing that one out of anywhere. Been a calm second half compared to the first half, it feels like. Good defense right there by Ben Osborne. Tigers got numbers, just gonna keep pushing. Tigers have Huge all kinds of green in front of them. Asengoy, he's gonna start pushing. Looking for an open guy, he might take the shot. Just a little too high. That one's gonna go across the street into the neighbor's yard. And you called it right into the main reserve. I thought it was going to get ran over, but no cars over there. Good good attempt at a shot right there by Josh and Goy, but kind of a little bit too much on it, a little bit way <laughs> too above that above that that tall up post. But Now this is my first game here at Kirkland. You've been here several different times. Have you ever seen a ball hit a car going in the opposite direction? No, I have I have not. I have yet to see that, but I feel like I haven't like paid attention enough to sure. notice that happening. But I feel like it has definitely happened a numerous amount of times, but well, usually you're in the jungle squad. Yeah, but we've only been to like three games so far this year. We we started going like about a, a little bit, a little bit ago. And that's going to be a call on the Trojans once again. A you can't do that moment right there. That's Alex Morofsky and Noah Allen on the side getting ready to get subbed in. Broken Arrow 5-1, and one, Jinx 2-3. and three. Broken Arrow is atop the District 3 standings, while the Jinx Trojans are 5th in District 4. And Goy, good shoulder right there. They got an opportunity, and Goy, he's still got control on. of it still. He's going to box out, look for a guy. Time to go for Pacheco. <laughs> Tigers find the back of the net. And Pacheco, what a strike right there. A lot of second chances on that moment right there to get that opportunity, but great job by him. Great job right there by Pacheco. I mean, Ngoi had he kept control of it that whole time. They went for the shots, and, and all that Pacheco had to do was just be there, his presence there, just had to kick it in there. Great job. And that started oh from Ngoi God. putting that effort in to get that ball in that area. So the Tigers get on the board. It's 1-0. Tigers looking to pick up their sixth win of the Alex season. Rusty and number 47, Noah Allen. Now Noah Allen and Morofsky are in. They sub out in Goy and Marcus Givens. Now with a 1-0 lead, just like the other game, but there was a reverse. If the Tigers can just maintain what they need to do, it should be a victory. So 23 minutes to go in the contest. It's going to be a free kick for the Trojans. Trojans are not going to have to be on the attack the rest of the way. Boss picks it up. Keeps it inside that box who can grab it. Good awareness by E. Boss. He's going to smartly roll it out to Lil Dilly. Let's get that out to Morofsky. Morofsky going to try to create something. Get to tee time. It's going back to Dill. Dill at the right place at the right time. Trojans have definitely picked up the pace. Javi gets that good steal right there. So Noah Allen's going to look back at it. Naranjo's going to give it to Osborne, and Osborne's got opportunities to get it to somebody. Osborne on the far side, boots it up across midfield.
Javi lost it, and now Jinx has numbers. They can do something here. The Tigers stay poised as tea time gets the hit on that one. And Irvine's going to just clear that one out of here as Morofsky's got it. That's Naranjo putting out some moves. Trojan still on the tack. Great job right there by Julian Tubbs, keeping control of it. Gets it over to Coop. Good chippiness right there with his feet as Naranjo's doing it. He steals that one. Great job. After that goal, the Trojan. And he, and he slips, and Morosti's going to take advantage of that one. He's got people with him, and that's a good steal right there by Nick Treat. Treat, right place, right time. It's going to stay with the Trojans. Got some subs coming in, at least one. Yeah, coming back is Derek Roberts. He's getting subbed in for Tristan Crow, a.k.a. Tea Time, putting in some effort over there. Good to see him guy finally get his rest. Well deserved. 21 minutes now. He's going to take a deep throw and a good header right there by Lil Dilly. There's some grabbing right there. A little bit of aggression from both guys. Not just one, but both. As Kong Meyer was requesting for the call, but he didn't get it. That's going to be a shot, but that's not one, that one is not going anywhere as E-Boss was there to contain it and grab it. Javi's got it. He's got the speed to keep that one, but he gets it stolen right there. Ball coming on the near side. Morofsky's got the speed to easily close that one out and get possession of it. Great job by Morofsky. I don't know about that one. I don't think it was a little bit of a flop right there, but the Trojans keep possession of it as Gail Cordona did a good job selling that one. And now we got less than 20 minutes to go. Tigers remain up 1-0. And with this win, we would go up to five wins in the season, or six wins. Javi's keeping control of it. Dilly was there, but almost. So the Trojans will pick it up. Their tempo has picked up in the final 20 minutes here. A lot of the Tiger bench standing at this point. Yeah, just getting warmed up. As Cameron Petworth, team captain, will be getting ready to come back in, mostly to finish off these last, these last 19 minutes of this game. Also getting ready to come in. Matthew Lowe. A junior and a senior. Naranjo got two. Oh, that was Javi, excuse me. Good job by Irvine getting in front of that one. No one out of fighting to get that, that ball back. Substitution for a broken arrow. Let's go, Pip. Number six, Cam Pedworth, and number 44. Matthew coming out is Jack Irvine and Javi are coming back out. Great effort by both of these guys since they're going to get their well-deserved rest. They did all they could. Probably each running about 10 miles tonight. 100%. How many miles do you think you could run, JoJo? It's a marathon? Like how, 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 how much is a marathon again? Yeah, 26 miles, I, I'm doing about like, the most I could do, probably about like 10, 15. I, I, used, I did run track last year, so I, I was in pretty good shape. But me now, ah. He acts like he's old, I love it. 
No. <laughs> okay, bro. I'll. <laughs> No, my knees are fine. I actually have good knees. A lot of, a lot of people complain about their knees and everything. But I have fine knees. Tigers misdirection in the middle, and it goes back to the Trojans. At this point, I think Tigers' number one goal is just keeping on that momentum that they've been carrying on this whole game. I think he just can't, can't lose it, and he definitely cannot let Jinx take that on. 17 minutes to go now. Cross out there, but good job by the Tigers staying there. Dilly almost lost it, but they keep control. And they send it back to Boss. Gonna get it out to Roberts. And low, Logan for an open teammate, but Pacheco does not stay open. Good job right there by Noah Allen. And now, now Tigers have possession of him once again. And I feel like if you, you put the – Just put play the, keep away. Yeah, if you put the cap on the bottle, another goal is a cap on the bottle right there. I feel like that's the, just the capitalization to end this game. Of, it, it definitely can happen. morovsky has got control of it. It looked like it was a little bit of a push right there by Jason Baker, but they're not going to – they're just going to let him play. Yeah, they've let him play the majority of this game. Hard hit Good over on the far side. Good attack by Jack attack right there. Fifteen and a half to go. Tigers still, I would say, still have the momentum in this game so far, which is a good thing. Good job right there by Daly keeping that ball up. Good job by Morovsky. They got opportunity right here as Naranjo. He could take that shot, an almost close one right there. But Jack Franklin does a great job staying there and staying ready. Shot just off the mark. They got another opportunity just like that. Morovsky can do it himself with the shot, but good, good foot position right there by the Trojans' defense. We've got a corner kick. Corner for Tigers. 15 minutes remain. Josh and Goy comes in for Pacheco. Pacheco coming back out after that great goal by him, being in the right place, right time, doing his job. And that's a corner. It's still live. Still going around. Narano's going to get to it. At this point, like you said earlier, Dan, they're just playing keep away. That's basically what you got to do with a one score lead. Narano again. Tigers want to put some icing on that cake and get another goal in the back of the net, though. Great job right there. Ben Osborne putting his body out there, going straight for the ball. Realizing that he cannot get that peak. Good effort by Josh, keeping it in. Oh, such a good opportunity. Josh had a great job keeping that one alive. but And now Cam Pebworth doing his job on that side as a center defensive mid. It's going to go out of bounds. And the wall that stops the ball, Jack attack, doing a great job keeping that ball out of anywhere to make sure that nothing bad happens. Under 13, 1 0, broken arrow. Angel Didios getting ready to check back in. And that was a clear push. The ref's going to call that one. Free kick for a broken arrow. Some scores for you around the area. Deer Creek on top of Edmond Santa Fe, 4-0. Bishop McGinnis on top of Edmond North. These are all in the second half, by the way, 2-1. to one. 
Mustang in the first over Southmore 2-0. 1-1, one, one, second half, UConn and Piedmont. So those are the scores at 6A. Looking pretty good so far. The Tigers can just maintain staying number one in our district. And we're district three, correct? Or five, I'm right, yes. Josh keeping control of that ball, but gets it taken away by a Trojan. We're gonna get it right back. Pebworth loses his feet, foot control, but Lowe gets it. Great field position for the Tigers here. They're gonna get it to Roberts, and at this point, Tigers can just hold on to it, just look for, wait for one man to get open. Uh, Trojans clear it. Great job by Dilly keeping it in for the Tigers. And Allen's got it, but he clearly gets pushed, but they're not going to call that one. Good defense right there. Started with Padworth putting that up, putting in that effort to make sure that ball doesn't get to him. He's gonna cross it to that left side. Jack attack with the header. And they're gonna call that one. It was close, but I think it was the right call. It was slow to get up. Smoker giving some coaching advice. I mean, within these last 10 minutes, we can't hold, we can't, we can't get too comfortable, we can't let anything get past us. Got to stay poised and keep doing what we've been doing this whole game. As the Trojans sub out Dosen Coop to get some more fresh legs out there. So, good field position for the Trojans. 10-23 remain. Just gotta get it out of there. Great job by the Tigers. Now it was almost an offsides, but good awareness right there by Jamison Joseph to make sure to go back to make sure he doesn't get any offsides. And that's gonna be a goal kick for the Tigers. As we hit the single digits with nine minutes to go. Eboz can just take his time getting this ball. No need to rush. Just take a little light jog, waste That's that exactly time. That's exactly what he's doing. I'd like to thank our one club sponsors, First National Bank of Broken Arrow, Since in St. John, Tulsa Bone and Joint, TTCU Federal Credit Union, the Arrow Group, and Quick Trip. A lot of great soccer we've seen today so far. Yeah, Lady Tigers lost a tough one, 1-0. One Broken Arrow clinging to a 1-0 lead over the Trojans. Good cross to Ngoy, but he loses control of it. Good slide tackle attempt right there by Didios. And Dilly's got it, but that one was a clear push right there by Carson McVicker, and that was a good call by the ref to make sure that one doesn't go away. And we finally hear it, you can't do that. Derek. Shout out Jungle Squad, I've been saying it. Derek Roberts was gonna kick it, but he hands it off to Matthew Lowe. Lowe with the short one. Line drive. But at the same time, it's kind of good because look who keeps possession, the Tigers. Lowe gets it, but then he loses it. And they've got somebody down there. Ball going the other way now, but it some nice defensive effort out of the Tigers to force it to go out of bounds. Hendrickson doing a great job getting that ball out of there, just clearing it. No need to do anything else fancy, like turn around, try to kick Thank it deep and clear it. Tulsa Just get it out of there. Like 7.35 to remain. They've got Jack Irvine and Marcus Gibbons getting ready to check back in.
Going for the cross. Can I make sure to clear this one out? It's going to go out of bounds. They're going to just redo the corner. Redo it again. Jinx playing hurry up here. Second corner kick attempt. Off the mark. Good job Clinton to get out of there. Ball bouncing around. Good job and the Tigers. Tigers clear it. Yes. And their goalie is pulled for the Trojans. Good job by Pebworth getting it out of there. Risky one right there, but E Boss just be smart. Grabs it, falls on top of it. He's going to get it out to Roberts. And Roberts got some, some green grass on him, but kind of just throws it away with that pass. Low, putting a body on his defender. 6.15 remains. Great job right there, getting the foot out there by the Tigers. We got to make sure. A lot of these corner kicks are happening. Got to make sure to just stay strong and not let anything go in that goal. It's a promising looking one. It's going to go out. They're going to say corner, or not corner, but goal. Goal kick, but they're going to sub out their guys. Jack Irvine and Marcus Gibbons are coming in for, I believe, Matthew Lowe and Noah Allen. Five twenty to remain. Great job by Roberts keeping possession of that one. Pebworth does a great job as Gibbons got it now, but now they get it right back. In less than five minutes to go, it's go time for the Trojans. They got to get a goal here or something. Good ball right there, but the Tigers doing a great job trapping it as Cam Pebworth is just going to kick it back out for another corner kick. Time is becoming a factor for the Trojans. A loss here, and they will fall to two and four after winning the state championship last year. Yeah, a big fall for all those seniors being gone. It plays a big, pat, big part in your team. That's a good cross right there, but good job clearing it by the Tigers. And he was able to bend that ball. And that was a clear one right there. Good call by the ref. Four minutes remain. Cross right there. Just gotta make sure to just keep this ball with us and keep have we keep possession. Don't let anything crazy happen. This should be a win for the Tigers. Good ball right there. That looks like a promising one right there, but great job. And they're gonna say corner, but great effort by Dosen Coop. Doing it all himself, just keeping it, trying to get something going. So they'll be on the near side for the corner kick. You just can't let anything bad happen in these moments. Tigers just got to make sure to keep doing what they've been doing all day. Can't let anything happen. There goes the cross. That one hits the bar, and but hit the post. And they're still there, but Tigers do a great job just clearing it out. Two minutes and 40 seconds. And it's going to be Tigers throwing. So at this point, if Tigers can just keep it on their side, should be GG's. I'm going to 
to throw that one in, and Aranjo has it. Charles has got an opportunity. They got green grass, but Jack Irvine goes in there and cuts right through it. Great job by him. And DDOs can just take it himself at this point, and that's going to be a clear, could be a yellow at that point. But they're not going to pull it. I mean, really no need. This last minute. So minute 30. Trojans going to just keep control of it. Trojans able to save it. Big boot from Franklin. And that should be a should be a foul. Trojans get it in the net, but we'll find out here what the referee has to say. Clear foul right there on Evan. It, the shot was good by Cup. Still waiting for confirmation if it's a goal or not. We'll keep it here for just a moment because they'll make a ruling. Boss is hurt on the turf. Boss is slow to get up. His prey, Cairo, is warming up. Free kick, broken out. And it's a free kick, so the goal is not going to count. As expected, that was. And we'll take a quick timeout on Aerovision. As, actually, keep it here. Boss is just getting up. He's a little shook up, but I think he's going to be okay. Got very heated in the final yeah, they, minute of this game. After um, Evan got um, taken to the ground, and Dustin Coop went for that shot. I think it was one of our players that shot him to the ground. He was like, yo, you know, a little, little like old lineman type of vibe right there. Like, you, you can't do that to my goalie. Want to give a shout out to our athletic training staff for being on top of all the injuries this evening. Ref's calling out some of their players and just telling them to chill out. So the clock has started. Down to 45 seconds. Tigers just need to play keep away here. Clear it out any chance they can. 40 seconds on the clock. Jinx. Clear offsides. Yeah, they're calling that offsides. His cup is completely offsides, as what JoJo said. So down to 30 seconds. Tigers will probably slow it down here. Just keep maintaining that ball, and that should be game over. 20 seconds remain. No need to do too much. Just keep it calm and simple. 15 seconds, 10 seconds. Trojan's going to have to work quickly. It's McVicker. That ball's going to go out of bounds, but that's going to do it. Broken Arrow is your winner this evening. one nothing. So it's the split with the Lady Tigers losing a tough one to the Jinx Trojans, one nothing. But the boys redeem it, one nothing. Broken Arrow now improves to 6-1 and one on the season. The Jinx Trojans fall to 2-4. and four. We'd like to thank our one club sponsors, First National Bank of Broken Arrow, Since and St. John, Tulsa Bone & Joint, TTCU Federal Credit Union, the Arrow Group, and Quick Trip. We also want to thank our Aerovision crew, Antonio Hurling, our stream director, Greg Spencer, director of AeroVision, Blake Shive, producer and engineer, JoJo David, our color analyst and play-by-play -play partner in this one. And we'd also like to thank all the students that helped out during the broadcast as well. Girls lose one nothing, the boys win one nothing over Jinx Trojans. Until next time, go Tigers.